Hey everyone, my name is Sophie from Sophisticated Motherhood and welcome to the ultimate baby prep marathon for baby number two. I did one of these for our first baby and compiled all of the videos during pregnancy, all of the things I did to prep for our first. And now this is the version where I'm prepping for our second baby. So there's still lots of organizing content, lots of prep for both myself, postpartum and for baby tips for a second baby registry, how I got free baby gifts this time around, lots of freezer meals and recipes including some that are lactation friendly. I reorganized our bottle area and milk storage. I also reorganized the nursery closet, the nursery dresser, the kids bathroom, and there are some little nuggets where I'm sharing transitioning our toddler out of a nursery into his bigger boy room. So if you are expecting a second or a first, sit back, relax, enjoy this video, press play while you maybe get some baby prepping done as well because there is over four hours of content of clips that I have compiled from both this channel, Sophisticated Motherhood, as well as my other YouTube channel, Sophisticated Organization. I pulled all of those baby prep clips clips that I had in other videos over on my other channel and added them in here as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I will link the first video if you want even more content and you're just in that nesting mode and want to have this on in the background, like I said, and get some stuff done as well. So with that, enjoy the videos. Please make sure you're subscribed to my channel for more. I have lots of content related to pregnancy, obviously, as well as toddlers because I have a now two-year-old and I am going to be filming a lot more related to babies and newborns and just everything motherhood. So I want to thank you for joining me today. Day, and here are the videos. So today I wanted to start pulling out the bins that I have in our guest room closet of all of our son's old clothing that he has outgrown because I am having another baby boy, which I think is gonna make this process really easy because it's the same gender and we are actually having our boys pretty much exactly two years apart. So all of the clothing should match up with the season. So I shouldn't have to go through too much. I just wanna make sure as I was putting things away that things weren't stained and that I really still like it, all of that stuff. And we also do, did get a lot of hand-me-downs from my twin nephews. And those hand-me-downs are going to be a little bit different because since they were twins, they were preemies. So we do have preemie clothing. And I don't think I'm gonna put those out into the new nursery just because I'm hoping that we don't have a preemie. And if for some reason I go into like a really early delivery or labor and have a really small baby, then I think I could pull those out. But for now, I'm just gonna assume and hope that we will have a full term delivery and baby and will most likely be in the newborn size. So the other thing that's worth noting is that the twins were born the exact opposite time of the year. They're six months apart. So we got a lot of like summer clothing for our winter baby in the newborn size, which didn't quite match up. So I'm going to have to sort through some of that stuff. And I thought I would just take you along with me as I go through. I already pulled out this cute little snowsuit, which little tip, this snowsuit is newborn to seven pound size and i am telling you it could have fit him till he was like nine months old <laughs> it's so so big so if you're ever getting a patagonia snowsuit keep that in mind but i am just going to start going through this i don't have the nursery set up or anything but i think i'm going to separate out by clothing that is going to go in the closet versus in the dresser and the stuff that's going to go in the closet, I am gonna start hanging up. And I think I'll put those like little dividers that say newborn versus um, zero to three month, three to six months, all of that stuff. And then the stuff that goes in the dresser, we still have to carry the dresser upstairs. So I'm waiting for somebody 
stronger than I am, more capable than I am at this point to help carry that dresser upstairs. And then I'll get to organizing all of that. My plan right now is not to wash stuff because I'm doing this so early in my pregnancy. Admittedly, I'm just really excited. I'm still in my second trimester. So this is a little bit early, but again, I'm really excited and we'll plan to wash things in phases. So once I'm a little bit further along in my third trimester, then I'm going to wash all of the newborn stuff and potentially the zero to three month stuff. And then as I get closer in the next size and our baby is like two months old or something, we're getting close to maybe trying on some of those three to six month clothing, then I will wash that stuff as well. But I think I'm going to pack probably a lot of this stuff into the new nursery closet and save these bins open so I have some more room to continue to put our older son stuff in these bins and I'll probably put like a reverse label on the other side so that while these preemie newborn zero to three month clothing are being used I could put like a 2t size on this or I don't know something like that we will see but for now I'm going to sort through these things are so cute all of this stuff that I think I want to hang up I usually do boy outfits it's a little bit more difficult but I usually do stuff that is like I'm, I'm holding a sweatsuit so this is not nicer uh, but like two-piece sets like this I don't like to have these folded as much I think they're just a little bit easier for me to hang up but nicer clothing as well everything that's a little sleeper those I tend to fold and just leave those in the dresser but these little two-piece sets let's see that are really really casual I don't think he ever wore this I think this is a hand-me-down these ones with like the little leggings and stuff that I'll put just in the dresser but stuff that looks nicer is what I like to put in the closet. Gosh, I have a lot of newborn stuff. I can't remember with our first how long he wore newborn clothing. I feel like it wasn't that long. But it is really nice to have some newborn stuff because he was a little bit smaller so that worked out well I'm trying to think some of this stuff like that doesn't have feet since he's going to be born in december it's a little bit tricky i prefer to avoid the baby socks if possible and the other thing i'll say too is i am not a fan of things with snaps so when i organize in the dresser i like to put things into separate categories so i had a full separate category for all of the sleepers that had zippers versus the outfits that had snaps because when we were looking for pajamas to wear at night i was not about to be messing around with snaps i will tell you that much Oh my gosh, this was one of my favorite outfits of his. This is like a 3D little puffy polar bear. Okay, this is bigger. This is a zero to three month size. I don't know how organized I have it in here. It's like a little bit mixed up. Okay, here's one thing that I know I'm gonna get rid of. I had these PP teepees that my mom actually made for me and we never used them. We did have some incidents with our little boy going to the bathroom while we were changing his diaper, but I think it's just better to like open the diaper and let some air in and close it or just like give them a quick wipe with a wet wipe like on their tummy and that gives them that cool sensation and hopefully they'll go to the bathroom one more time before you open up the uh, diaper completely and they go everywhere, but the PPTPs are just like not practical. We did not use them. I will not use them. So I'm going to get rid of those. I don't even know why I saved those. I should have done a better job going through this. But that is okay. And I'm just gonna keep going through and I'll check in with you in a little bit.
finished going through the first bucket, getting us all the way through three months. And I think I'm gonna start grabbing some of these hangers. I really didn't find that much to hang in the little sizes. It's mostly sleepers. And if you are gonna be a first time mom, then I would strongly suggest you just get mostly sleepers for the newborn, even zero to three month age. We had a baby who had a lot of spit up and it was a lot easier just to change those zippered outfits, much easier for quick diaper changes. Like I said, even those snapped sleepers were a pain in the rear. So I am a huge fan of just the zippered sleepers. It's nice to have a few little outfits that are like this cute little two piece set here with a bear on it for photos or something like that. Um, I know sometimes little girl clothing can be really exciting and there's little dresses and stuff. So more to hang up in probably like for a little girl. I don't know why I can't do this button. There we go. Um, and I will link the bins that I use as well as these kids hangers and the clips that I get on them. They were perfect for the newborn age and with our son now, I also have some bigger size like toddler clothing for him. We have stuff all the way up to like 5T even for him that has been purchased when things were on sale and these little hangers fit perfectly for babies and really little kids. Um, a lot of the winter gear, like snowsuits and stuff, that I like to hang up. Keep those in the closet. That is supposed to be the newborn size, like I mentioned. Then these ones, keep an eye out at Old Navy because these little teddy bear ones are so cute and quite reasonably priced. This one I have in a zero to three month because with him being born in December, then it'll be nice as it transitions to a little bit warmer, having something that's just a little lighter or for those warmer winter days. And then I will hang this one up. The other thing I found as I was going through is that I think I am going to pull out some of the more summer clothing. We do have a trip planned to California in April. So I guess maybe it'll be more like four or five months, depending on when the trip is and when he's born and all of that stuff. So zero to three month stuff might fit when um, we're in warmer weather. So I am going to pull that out and maybe we'll have another trip planned. Probably not. Well, he's zero to three months old, but we might have another trip planned. So I'm just going to keep those more summertime outfits pulled out for him. And then what else? Pretty stuff I'm leaving in here. I did find a few pairs of socks. I don't know if these are these are probably like newborn zero to three month size. I don't know if I ever knew what size they were. Some of these booties that are still connected. I never used them. These ones are very cute. Also never used, but maybe I'll pull them out and see if we use them this time. The other category that I have I need to go through is all of these hats. Actually, one of these is not a pair of socks. It's the little mittens. Gonna get rid of these, never used them. We used an electric nail file to file his nails. So we just trimmed them down. And then if for some reason we're having an issue with him like scratching himself or something, I have a lot of the sleepers that have the fold over sleeves so I can cover his hands that way. And I just don't really find a need for those mittens. Even though we had a baby who was born in the winter, he never really wore hats. We have so many of these hats and I don't know why I personally don't like them. Like I just don't think they're that cute. So I might keep some of the preemie ones in case either this baby's a preemie or we have a preemie in the future. And I know it's important to keep their heads really warm. And then I'm going to keep some of the ones that are more like the boutique brands or just a couple of the plain colored ones I got from Kite Baby, like a really nice brand. 
I'll keep those. But some of these other ones with outfits that I don't even like that much that have matching hats. Just because we never wore them. Like, I'm just, I know I'm not going to put him in there. That nice two-piece set. It has a matching little crochet bear hat. That could be cute. But the rest of these, I just don't really see a need. So I'm going to add those to the declutter pile just because I really don't like them. And I'm gonna check, see what's a preemie. And then I'll probably haul this stuff out and then also go through the three to six month pile as well. Call me crazy, but I have finished going through the three to six and I think I'm gonna keep going. I feel like it might be nice to have all the clothing just through the first year in his closet. So I'm gonna power through, get this stuff on hangers. I put all of the stuff that needs to go in the dresser in just some of these bins that I can stick in the closet for now. And I did that with the other two sizes that we had the newborn and zero to three month. How funny is this little Hawaiian shirt? Very cute. Um, and then the three to six month range, I clearly have a lot more clothing because the other two sizes that bin was not full at all. And this one I completely filled and was not able to fit in the extra sleep sacks because I also have those in each of the sizes. I think it's probably because there's some bulky ones in this size. We played around with weighted sleep sacks. Once you hit about three months, that's when um, some babies start rolling and you wanna transition them out of a swaddle. So we tried weighted sleep sacks, like I said. We tried um, the Merlin's Magic Sleep Suit. What else? Um, just some like regular sleep sacks. We did have one larger size swaddle that was in this size. So there's just a lot of experimenting that went on in this size. So I don't quite have room for that, but I'll just find another spot for now until we get that dresser upstairs. So if you are an experienced mom with multiple kids and you've gone through this process, I'm curious to know how you did it, if you did something similar and pulled out like multiple sizes at a time and kind of like filled up the new baby's room with all of your child's clothing in a bunch of different sizes. I know it completely depends on the age gap with your kids as well as, um, you know, like if you're having the same gender or a different gender, I envisioned this process being a little bit different. Just kind of thought the likelihood would be that we would have another baby that was either a different gender or born in a at least slightly different season. But like I said before, we're having another boy and they're both December birthdays. At this point, who knows, they could have the same birthday. That would be pretty crazy, but it makes this process very, very simple just because if we were having like a different gender, for example, I might want to go through and pick out some things that were more gender neutral or if it was a different season. I don't know. I might still pull everything out or might just do like partially pull it out because I am, as I shared in the zero to three month category, pulling out some of the summer stuff still, just in case there's travel or who knows, maybe there's a really warm day in February or something like that. Okay, I have all of this hung up. I'm gonna go put that away, bring the accessories over to his room and we'll do uh, the next category together. what happened.
happens at this age range, but I think, you know, I move past that sleeper stage that I was talking about before and like, you know, nine months, especially around a year, they're wearing more little person clothing, little boy, little girl clothing, and just a lot less of the more pajama category, I guess. Um, and so I'm finding a lot more of this whole pile. I don't know if you can really see whole pile behind me is to put on hangers and I only have two hangers left. I did order a new pack and a new pack of clips on Amazon. So they're supposed to be here tomorrow. I'll probably just leave these in a pile until tomorrow and deal with it then. Um, and then this category is also confusing because there is some clothing that's like six to 12 month clothing and some clothing that's six to nine month clothing. I learned the first time with the first baby what the difference was. I remember calling my mom and my sister-in-law saying like, okay, so when it says nine months, does that mean it fits them when they're around nine months or what the heck does that mean? And then learning it's more of like a six to nine month size or three months means zero to three month size. Um, but also I wish I had a better system in place to label clothing that doesn't fit true to size because some brands and some clothing just says, you know, nine months, but it fit, would have fit way earlier. And by the time, you know, our kid was nine months old, it was like way too late for him to be wearing it. So I need to find a good system for that. I think I'll just start to check in with the next size of clothing before our baby reaches that stage, just to make sure. Always good with new clothing anyway. I have a Halloween costume in here too. So I think I'm gonna leave the Halloween costume in the bucket. I don't know if we'll be using the same Halloween costume or not. But I'll leave that in there. And then I am almost done here. I'm gonna just put all this stuff in the closet. Hopefully this was kind of fun to see the process. I know I was really excited to go through this just personally and see all of the clothing that our first child wore and get really excited for baby number two to wear some of the same outfits kind of nice that we hopefully get to save a lot of money here. And with that, I am going to plan to film two more like clothing videos. I'm going to do a closet organization video as well as a dresser organization video. Those may be on my other channel, Sophisticated Organization. So make sure you are subscribed here on Sophisticated Motherhood as well as Sophisticated Organization, just so you don't miss any videos, especially if you like organizing content, you would like my other channel and then all of the mom stuff is always over here. And I have so many things planned on both channels, just if they're more organizing related, it'll probably be on the sophisticated organization channel. I will also have more baby prep videos, probably somewhere I'm like washing the clothing and things like that. But again, tons to come. I wanna thank you for joining me today. If you're expecting baby number two, three, four or more, and this isn't your first go around, I wanna share some of the things that I'm registering for and purchasing for baby number two. I personally found it kind of difficult to find a good consolidated list of things that I might need for a second baby. So I thought I'd share with you what I've come up with, what I'm gonna purchase, and again, put on a registry. I have filmed another video on putting together a baby registry in general, so I'm not gonna go too into the woods with a baby registry. I think it's fine to have a baby registry for a second, third, fourth, again, whatever number child this is for you, for a couple of reasons. Number one, sometimes you may have a, another baby shower. You might have a baby sprinkle, which if you haven't heard that term, that's just a smaller version of a baby shower. You might also have friends or family members reach out to you specifically asking you what you might want for a gift. And an easy way to answer that question and give them a few different price options would be to send a baby registry. The other reason could be because there's registry discounts. So if you put everything on your baby registry, even if you never share it with anybody, just having it for yourself to have the completion discounts with whatever registry service you use could be a reason to do it in itself. 
I'm also gonna mention at the outset here that I am about to have my second baby boy. So I already have a little boy. I'm pregnant with another boy and they're gonna be exactly two years apart. So the things that I need might be a little bit different from the things that you need, depending on the age gap between your kids and the genders. So for me, I don't need to buy a bunch of extra clothing because I'm having both boys and have a lot of boy clothing and my boys are born again exactly two years apart so the seasons all work for the clothing even if I had two boys and they were born on opposite seasons I might need a little bit more summer clothing for when my baby is six months for example or winter clothing when my baby is 12 months you get the idea so it really is specific to you and again that age gap also makes a difference because we're having two under two, two around an age gap of two. I'm still gonna have both babies in cribs. I'm gonna have both babies still rear facing in the car seat. All of those things are gonna impact what you're gonna wanna purchase and register for. With that said, I think that's a great lead in to jump into some of the categories that I have. And the first one is travel. So I just mentioned both babies or both kids, baby and toddler will be rear facing. So I am going to purchase additional car seat mirrors. We're actually going to end up with four car seat mirrors because we have my husband's car and my car. He does the drop off and pick up a lot of times for daycare. So we need to have a good configuration for his car. And then my car is more of the family car that we use in pretty much every other circumstance. So we're registering for two more car seat mirrors, one for my car and one for his car. In terms of car seats, we already have two car seats, one for my toddler in my car, one for my toddler in my husband's car. But one thing that we do need is an extra infant car seat base to go in my husband's car. And I will link all of these products in the description box below. I have a rotating car seat that we are in love with for the toddler age. I'll share our infant car seat and the base that we're getting, the car seat mirrors we're getting, and everything else that I mentioned throughout the video. For strollers, we have an Uppa Baby Vista. That was the main stroller that we got when I had our first son. So something that we need for baby number two is all of the accessories to convert it into a double stroller. So that is an extra seat. And then there are two components that you also need to purchase to convert it into a double stroller. Something else that we ended up getting secondhand was a side-by-side -side double stroller, which I'm very excited about. So we've already gotten that taken care of, but that's also something to keep in mind if you want to have a double stroller set up Again, depending on the age gap with your kids, that would be really helpful. We also considered the idea of doing a ride on board. That's an option with the Uppa Baby. We have a travel stroller, which is a Bugaboo Butterfly, and we can get a ride on board for our toddler for that. We haven't decided to make that purchase yet or put it on a registry or anything, but that is something that we've also considered as well as a wagon. That's kind of on my list in the future, but I think with our kids being so young and having two at this point, we're not quite at that stage yet. The next category is feeding and for bottle feeding or breastfeeding, it's important to get a few replacement items, even if you want to reuse in general the same pump that you use or reuse the same bottles that you use. It's highly recommended between babies to get new bottle nipples or to get new pump parts. Bottle nipples, basically anything that's been in your baby's mouth that's silicone can have microscopic holes that you can't even see and it can deteriorate over time. Depending on the age gap, it could be worse, but when it's something that has been in your baby's mouth and they've been using it that often, it's nice to refresh it for the next baby and lots of bottles you can purchase just new nipples and don't have to purchase new bottles. I think we are going to get some new nipples, but we might also get a few more bottles because our circumstance has changed since baby number one. We are gonna have our baby at daycare instead of having our child at home with a nanny. So I assume we'll need a few more bottles, but gonna hold off until we figure out exactly exactly what bottles baby number two prefers because that can always be a thing as well that babies have preferences with bottles. 
for breast pumps. You should be replacing those duckbill valves. It kind of depends on what your pump looks like, but the little silicone parts, again, do deteriorate over time. And to have your pump be as effective as possible, you probably should be replacing those parts throughout your breastfeeding journey, depending on how long it is, and definitely from one child to another. There is one thing that we already purchased on our own and pre-ordered, and that is the new Baby Brezza bottle washer, sterilizer, and dryer all in one. It's a brand new product. I believe if you purchase it right now, there is still a waiting period. So if you purchase it, it's not like it comes right away or anything. I think it's currently a month delayed at this point, but I've already used it to wash and sanitize a few of our old bottles and am in love with it. And I think just having a second kid, a lot of the stuff that I want to look at getting this time around is to help with convenience. And one of the things that I hated the most most about bottle feeding in that early stage was just all of the washing of bottles and pump parts. It just felt like this never ending cycle. We chose not to use the dishwasher, but having a separate spot that's completely sterile and you can sterilize and dry and do all of this in one, it's a pretty cool machine. So if you haven't heard of it, check it out. I am so excited to use it this time and so is my husband. Another convenience thing for a little bit further along that I put on our registry is a gift certificate to Little Spoon. If you don't know what Little Spoon is, it is a delivery service that is a great way to start solids with your baby. I made tons of homemade purees when I started with our first and I'm just anticipating having less time to do all of that stuff, but I still want our baby to get all of the nutrients and have really good healthy food to start off his feeding journey. So I figured if somebody's looking for something to get because it feels like we don't need that much, tossing that on our registry, it would be really nice if somebody did purchase that and I would love to give it a try. So if you do baby list, they have an option to add a little spoon gift certificate or subscription service. The last thing for feeding is because our boys are gonna be close together, I do want a second high chair. The high chair that we have is the Stokey Trip Trap high chair and it lasts, even an adult can sit on it and I kind of want to preserve my nice dining room chairs and our son right now is still kind of in the messy stage we're dropping food or his hands just get really messy and he wipes them on his shirt or on his high chair and i would hate for him to wipe them on our fabric chairs so i love the idea of keeping him in his high chair just adapting it a bit he's kind of getting to the point where he's done with the straps and can just use it as a chair and then for baby two I think even when he's six months old and starting to have solids, our older son will still be on that chair, probably still making a mess. Kids make a mess for a long time, so I would love to get a second high chair and specifically the same type that we already have. A great thing to register for or to stock up on in general are diapers and wipes. A great theme when you're thinking of what should I be getting for a second, third, or fourth child is just to stock up on your essentials. If somebody is wondering what to get for you, any essential that you know that you're going through over and over again, bonus points if it's something that's going to be used by both kids, but any of those essentials would be a great thing to tell friends or family to get for you or for you to stock up on on your own. Other things that are great to stock up on fall into the health and medicine category. I put on our registry a few different medications, vitamin D drops I use when I'm breastfeeding, so I'll need to get those again. I like the dye-free Motrin. We also get a version of a dye-free acetaminophen. So those things I'll be purchasing. I put an Aquaphor set on. It's a little baby set of two different things of Aquaphor. We go through Aquaphor a lot. Great thing to have with the newborn and with the toddler or adults can always use it. And then the last thing that we can always stock up on is baby wash shampoo. We use a body wash and shampoo all in one from Tubby Todd. So we've just started buying the big bulk sizes of it and can always use more of that. So that would be a great thing. And then baby gear. I have a bunch of miscellaneous things that we need. I mentioned with feeding, how you wanna replace bottle nipples. Same goes for pacifiers. So we will be needing new pacifiers for our second baby. A few different things for his nursery. Because we have two cribs, I need a new crib mattress. I need a new mattress protector, new crib sheets. Luckily, we got a hand-me-down crib, so we don't need a second crib, but that might be something that you need to consider purchasing for a second baby. 
We're not done with our first using a baby monitor, so we will also be purchasing or registering for a second baby monitor. And then a necessity for us and something that has really helped our first is a sound machine. And I like the Hatch sound machine. They've come out with a new version since we had our first baby. So we will be getting a sound machine for his room that plugs in and stays there. We have a few other portable ones that we use with our first. And then the other thing that I would like to look into getting is another baby carrier. I had two different types of baby carriers last time. I had a soft fabric one, a little bit more of a structured one, actually three, and one that Jim used that was very structured. He had the Baby Bjorn one. I loved the fabric wraps and found that we had a baby that spit up quite a bit and was really frustrated when it was dirty. And I'm just going for convenience here. It would be nice to have a second one, not a necessity, but it would be very convenient. The last random baby gear item that I would like to get, not a necessity because we have so many blankets. We received so many baby blankets, but I had a friend who had the copper pearl, I wanna say it's like a three layer blanket. If you have a baby born in the winter or a young child in the winter, this blanket is perfect for throwing over a stroller or in the car seat. And it is just so nice. Every other blanket that we had, I felt like I had to fold it over numerous times or it was weirdly bulky, but I love the copper pearl one. We don't own one ourselves and I think it'd be really nice. So I tossed that on the registry as well. And then the last category that I think you should really consider, especially if you're struggling with what to put on a second or third baby registry is some stuff for you or things for the parents. That's a category under baby list. I think it's called things for the parents. I decided to toss on a nursing bra that I've been lusting after. If there's anything like that, that you've been looking at, it could be a great opportunity for somebody to pamper you or you and your husband. I also just added a DoorDash gift card on there just to let people know that that would be something that would be really helpful in the postpartum phase. I know that when I go to visit somebody that's just had a baby or am looking for something to help celebrate a family that's just had a baby, if you are local, bringing food is an incredibly kind thing to do and so appreciated by parents. But if you're not local, it's difficult to do that. Or if you're not a cook and you don't wanna make something homemade or pick something up, giving a gift card to DoorDash or Uber Eats or some meal delivery or even their favorite restaurant, if you know what that is, would be a really kind gift. So I just put that on there as a guideline as well. I'm so excited to be organizing all of my milk storage, my pump parts, my bottles, everything to feed baby because I just kind of shoved everything away after that journey was done with our first and didn't ever love the organizational system I had in place originally. So today I'm gonna put a little bit more effort into it and get this cabinet organized here in our laundry room. And if you're curious why I'm using our laundry room, it's a couple of reasons. Number one we have a two-story home and our baby's nursery is on the second story as well as our bedroom and there's a lot of feeding that goes on upstairs also there is a sink in here which makes it very convenient and number three there's some more space in this laundry room that last time with our first we brought up a mini fridge and i stored my breast milk in the mini fridge up here and just kept it separate from our regular refrigerator, which was really nice, especially some of those nights where I wanted my husband to give our son a bottle. He could just walk over to the laundry room without having to go all the way downstairs and turn on the lights and all of that and just grab it right from the laundry room. So the first thing I was trying to do here was play around with what organizers are going to fit best in my space. I always try and do that, figure out what types of organizers I'm going to put in the space and then figure out what fits into which organizers. I did not go out and purchase any new organizers for this. These are just things I had around the house. If you aren't familiar, I do have a separate YouTube channel, Sophisticated Organization, where I do all different organizing videos as well as motivation and productivity and stuff like that. So if you're into the organizing thing, make sure to follow me over there as well. Last time I did exclusively breastfeed. I am hoping to do the same thing this time. So you will see a lot of breastfeeding supplies, but also things that apply to those who formula feed like bottles and soap and cleaning supplies. This time I'm very excited because 
Baby Brezza just came out with a new bottle washer and sterilizer and this whole all-in-one thing. I'm not gonna lie, it's very expensive. <laughs> we shelled out for it the second they pre-launched it and I don't think it comes out until October and our babies do after that anyway. So hopefully it'll get there in time and I'm really excited. I will do more of a review once I get it just to share if it's worth it or not, how expensive it ends up being purchasing the tablets because you have to use their tablets to wash. But overall, I'm very excited to give that a try. You'll see I'm also unboxing some new things. We had a Bye Bye Baby not too far from us that of course went out of business, just like all Bye Bye Babies and Bed Bath and & Beyond. And I went there a couple of times and found some really good breastfeeding items, a few different LV things like the LV Catch and the LV Curve. So I have a nice little collection going here of breast milk collectors. So that's gonna be one of my categories. And as I'm going through things, I am trying to make categories, put all of the bottles together Together, put pump parts together, put milk collectors together, put cleaning supplies together, like I said, and that'll make things easier. The tablets that I'm opening up right now go with the Baby Brezza bottle cleaner that I was talking about. I also have a travel bottle cleaner. I have some of the Dapple Soap, which is my favorite, as well as a big Dapple Soap refill. And I will make sure to link a lot of these things in the description box below if you are a new mom or if you're an experienced mom and going to enter this journey again or maybe you're already in the early days of feeding and stuff and you're looking for some new items that might help. On Amazon Prime Day, I bought some breast milk storage bags. I bought one large box of my favorite and I also had some leftover ones from a different brand that I am going to combine. This might be a lot of breast milk storage bags, but we are going to probably do daycare with baby number two, whereas the first baby was here at home with me, so I didn't really need as many milk storage bags. So I have no idea how many I'm gonna go through, but I know I have a good collection. And you'll see I'm pulling things in and out of different bins, and that's just to figure out how everything fits best and how it's gonna work for me. I also want to say that I know that this is not necessarily set in stone. Some things may change. I try to make the categories broad enough that if I add things to my collection for feeding or remove items, that the organizational systems will still be in place. But with anything in your house, sometimes your needs just kind of fluctuate. So things may end up changing partway through our journey. This Divided Lazy Susan is really great. I was playing around with putting different bottle tops in there. All of these little bottles attach directly to my Spectra pump. That is the one that I got from insurance last time. And you'll see I also have a lot of parts for the LV wearable pump, which I really, really enjoyed. I haven't talked to my OB or my insurance company or anything about getting another breast pump with this pregnancy. I know most insurance companies cover a breast pump for every pregnancy. I think typically as long as they are at least a year apart. Our kids are gonna be at least a year apart, so I can probably get another breast pump through insurance. If you have a favorite breast pump or if you think there would be a type that would be a good addition to my collection, having the Spectra already and having the LV wearable, let me know in the comments below because I could use some help thinking through if I'm gonna get a third one just because it's covered, what type should I get? But with that, of course, there's gonna be even more parts that go with things. I don't love the organizers that I ended up having in the drawer there. I'm just gonna keep it like that for now. So I do think I'll probably end up getting another solution for that space. Now I wanted to start playing around in the cabinet where the bulk of the storage is gonna be. I was seeing not only how the organizers fit in there, but how the items fit in the organizers and then fit in the cabinets because it's a two-part process. I want the items to fit well in the organizing containers and then the organizing containers to fit nicely in the space. 
I love these tall, deep acrylic bins because I can pull them out and grab exactly what I'm looking for. The problem about this area is that it's a little bit hard to reach because it's in a far corner, as you can tell with me hopping on the countertop there. So being able to have some organizers that I can pull down and grab and then look through works a lot better in this area. If you have a cabinet where you can reach everything a lot easier, you don't have to worry about that as much. But for me, in this weird, awkward space, the pull-down type organizers are going to be really helpful for me. I originally had the bottles in that white mesh organizer and changed my mind and thought they would fit better into one of those acrylic bins and it did end up working out a lot better that way. I'm continuing to unbox anything that I have that's still in boxes, most of which again are breast pump related or milk catchers. I am excited to try out the LV Curve and the LV Catch because those are two of the new things that I got. I used this clear blue bag last time around when I was breastfeeding to carry my pump around with me. So I am still thinking I'll keep that in this space as a little travel situation. I did look at Amazon around Prime Day and tried to find a specific carrier or bag for pump parts and specifically for my LV pump for wearable pumps to bring on the go and just decided it wasn't worth the money for me. The combination that I was really liking was to just have a any sort of bag. I was using a cosmetic bag that I already owned to store the breast pump itself, the charger, milk storage bags, all of that type of stuff. I usually had like a Sharpie in there just so I could write down the information as I was pouring milk into the milk storage bags. And then my favorite thing to have to keep the milk cold is either the series chill which i have in the travel section that i just put away or an item i keep in my freezer which is a freezer bag they are like lunch boxes or snack bags i like the snack bag size for just milk because it's a lot smaller and it actually freezes and has freezable parts to the bag so you don't have to stuff it with freezer packs or ice packs it just freezes itself so that i really enjoyed keeping in the freezer so i will keep that downstairs in my freezer this time around and continue to probably just use the cosmetic bag organizer that i have because it works just fine and especially the one that i have because it's that clear plastic i can run it underwater i can clean it out with soap or just wipe it down the last step of this organizing project is going to be making labels. This is helpful for me to make sure that I put things away in the right spot, know how things work because it's a new organizing system that I've just created. But also if you have nannies or babysitters or a spouse or a mother-in-law that comes over and is the and is looking for things or looking to help clean up and put things away, this is just gonna make that process even easier. And then the added bonus of just helps make the space look even more cohesive and put together and organized. So if you don't have a fancy label maker like this, don't worry about it. You can use any ordinary label maker. Or if you like the look of these, vinyl labels. I like the white. I think it looks really pretty on the acrylic. You could also do black or another color, whatever works best for you. But I do sell these labels on my website if you're ever interested in purchasing some labels and I can make them custom for you, your space, the size, whatever you want them to say, different fonts, and then ship them out to you. They're really easy to apply. I put this transfer tape on it. You peel it off, put it on wherever you want to stick the label, and then use like a credit card, a gift card, or I have a special tool that I use and rub it onto the surface and then just peel away that transfer tape and it's stuck on your organizer. It's what I like to call semi-permanent. You could peel it off if you wanted to, but you could also run it through the dishwasher and it stays on very well. You'll see this container has extra bottles in it. I did love the Como Tomos with my first, so that's what I'm keeping down low, hoping that it just works out for the second as well. But knowing that all babies are different, so I'm holding on to the variety of bottles that I had from free gifts from different companies that were sent out to me and just trying a few different bottles with our first baby. So we will have those up there just in case and may need to switch things around if that is what needs to happen. I also have cleaning supplies way up high because those I don't use as often. It's more like backup cleaning supplies I put in there. Some travel cleaning supplies as well as backup dapple dish soap, some of those backup 
tablets for the new Baby Brezza cleaner that I have. And then you'll see the next shelf down, I have all of those pump parts. So those are flanges for the most part. I have milk collectors. I have lots now with the LV Catch, the LV Curve, the Hakka. I also got some Hakka colostrum collectors because I'm gonna give that a try this time. The next container that's pump parts is more pump chargers as well as my actual LV units. And then I have another container for travel there, which is my series chill and any other small little travel things that I might use for milk. I have my Spectra pump that fit in there. And then on the bottom shelf, I have my bottles, my milk storage bags, and then the Divided Lazy Susan with all of the other parts for my pumps, extra duck bills, extra tubes, and then it tops to the little bottle that I use when I store the milk in the refrigerator up here. So that is it for this quick organizing project. I hope that you enjoyed. Again, don't forget to check out Sophisticated Organization, my other channel if you love organizing content. But again, all the motherhood stuff will be here. And I'm so happy to have you here on this motherhood journey with me as together we make it sophisticated. Here to share with you all of the free baby items I got for baby number two. I did all of this with baby number one as well. Got a lot of great freebies. Learned some things. There are some updates from last time I had a baby and I want to share it all with you. So let's jump right into some of the bigger boxes of things that you can get that you might be familiar with. If you're creating a baby registry at one of the more popular websites like Amazon or Target Walmart, Baby List, all of those websites do have some sort of a baby gift that you can order by creating a registry. So those are the ones I wanna start with. And I personally create my baby registry on Baby List. That's just what I prefer. And I have a few videos on baby registries if you're interested in that and building your baby registry, where to build it, all, all of that stuff. But with baby list, this is the box that you end up getting. And to get your free gift, and I say free in quotations because some of these gifts that I'm gonna share with you are truly free. There is no cost to you whatsoever. While other ones do require a shipping fee, and sometimes that shipping fee can be pretty hefty. For the baby list box, you need to create a registry on baby list. You also need to add three items to your registry from baby list, as well as three items from other stores. And then this has updated, I believe it was previously that you needed to purchase $10 worth of something from your registry. Now it's been updated to 30. That can be something that's purchased by you or somebody else buying gifts from your registry. And then the final thing is that you need to verify your address and pay the shipping fee. It turns out to be about $10 depending on the tax in your area. So keep that in mind that it is not completely free. It might cost around $10 for you to get it shipped to your house. So let's dig into what is in this little box here. And I think this is one of the better ones. It does have quite a few things in it. A lot of these you'll find that they have a baby bottle. This is the MAM bottle. Honestly, not one of my favorites. I tried this with our first baby and had a lot of issues with leakage because there's so many parts, but that's nice. It also comes with a MAM pacifier, which are our favorites. So I will definitely be using this. We also got a couple of clothing items. There is a newborn onesie from Colored Organics. Nice and neutral color here. It's a nice brown. Then from Monica and Andy, they sent a cute hat with elephants. And I think this is also probably a newborn size hat. We got a bib, one of the ones that kind of collects drool and spit up. And this is from Parker Baby Co. Really soft and gray. There's a few different things for diapering. I love when they have these wipe packs because they're perfect for the diaper bag or even if you want to have a smaller little to-go kit of if you have an emergency just have a couple of wipes and a couple of diapers maybe sitting in your car or something like that if you forget your full diaper bag we got one from honest they are sensitive clean conscious wipes we also got water wipes water wipes are very popular so it's a good way to try things out if you've never tried these things before especially if you're a new mom. A pack of Huggies special delivery diapers. There are three diapers in here and they are size one diapers, which is nice. There is another pacifier that we got. I have not 
opened this one up yet. It's from Bibbs. Oh, this one's really cute and neutral as well. And kind of a similar shape to the Mam one. There are a couple of bath essentials. This is from Noodle and Boo. I got some of these last time I was pregnant. I'm not sure which baby box I got it in, but they are quite heavily scented. Not my favorite. I can already smell it without even opening it, but it is a super soft lotion as well as a newborn two-in-one hair and body wash. And those will be nice if we have to travel and need a little bit of newborn soap or newborn shampoo. There is Vivi and Bloom two-in-one face and body whip lotion. Never tried this before. Never even heard of this brand. It's a Desiden sample. This is a diaper cream. Again, great thing to throw in your diaper bag. There is an Aveeno baby lotion. Great for on the go. I love all these little things. A mini Aquaphor that is specifically for babies. It's a three-in-one diaper rash cream. We did buy a full size of this and I put it on my baby registry for baby number two as well. Then there's a few things for mom, which is nice. There is a two pack of breast milk storage bags as well as disposable nursing pads in here. A stretch mark lotion sample as well as skin therapy oil from Palmer's Cocoa Butter Formula. So that's something I can still use while I am pregnant on my belly. And then a lot of these boxes and gifts will add in extra coupons and things like that. So it looks like there is a coupon that came with the breast milk storage bags and nursing pads. There's a $15 gift from Wellaments. I have previously bought a lot of medications, vitamin D drops I've bought from Wellaments. So that's something I'm probably going to use. Monica and Andy gave a discount code for 25% off your purchase. Parker Baby that gave the bib has 25% off as well. Colored Organics has $10 off and you can get a free swaddle, it looks like, from Little Unicorn. Free shipping available. So I don't know if maybe this is an actual just free item where there's nothing else you have to do or if you have to order something along with it. I'll have to check that out. So that is the baby list box. Let's move on to Amazon. Amazon has a few stipulations as well. One of the main things is that you need to be an Amazon Prime member to receive your free registry gift. Then you of course have to create a registry on Amazon and they have something that is their registry checklist. They guide you as to what types of things you should put on your registry, which is helpful if you are a first time mom or you're just trying to go through that checklist, but they require you to have 60% of their checklist on your registry before you can receive your free gift. I, again, said I used Babylist for my registry, both with my first and with my second. You can always make these registries private and I wouldn't spend too much time. If you're just trying to get the free gifts, you can just blindly add stuff and check the box and add all of their suggested items just to meet that requirement. And then you will also have to buy $10 worth of something from your registry or again, somebody else can buy $10 worth of something from your registry. I think I got a car seat mirror that we needed and that met my $10 requirement and I got my bag shipped to me. So let's go open this one up and see what is in here as well. Starting off again with that same exact sample that we got of the Palmer's Cocoa Butter Skin Therapy Oil and Stretch Mark Cream. So we have lots of that. Good thing I'm opening this now so I can use it while I'm still pregnant. There's lots of duplicates here. Two of the breast milk storage bags, two of the nursing pads. We got a couple of different bottles. The Dr. Brown's bottles, these are really popular and I felt like I received a lot of them in free baby gifts last time around. So this is a common one to get in free baby gifts. And then one that I've never seen before, never had the chance to try is the Dr. Talbot's anti-colic bottle. This one looks kind of cool. It says it helps reduce colic, spit up gas. It's an interesting shape. So this is something that I'm interested to try. And it also says that there is a soft flex pacifier that's included in this box as well. So you get a bottle and a pacifier. This seems like a really nice gift. It is a swaddle from Swaddle Me. It is their stage one, zero to three months, small, medium size. 
and it's in like a light gray. It almost looks like it maybe has a tiny greenish hue to it, but a gray swaddle. That's going to be something that we're going to for sure try out. Another clothing item here. I think I got the exact same onesie last time and it's from Carter's Simple Joys and it's a three to six month size with cute little rhinos and lions, elephants, turtles, little jungle animals in there. Another sample of the Aquaphor Baby, but a much smaller sample than we got with the Baby List box. And CeraVe samples of moisturizing lotion and wash and shampoo for babies. This is much better in my opinion than the other sample that we got from the Noodle Company because it doesn't have any fragrance to it and I don't like to use a lot of fragrance with baby. There is a Munchkin Daily Diaper Rash Spray. Never seen this before. Seen tons and tons of different types of diaper rash creams, but this is a diaper rash spray. And it says to spray the product on the skin, let it air dry, and you can use it two or more times daily or as needed. There were only two discount coupons here. There's 50% off your order for Shutterfly, plus 10 free birth announcements. HelloFresh stuck in one of their little coupons for 18 free meals, plus your first box ships for free. I did last time do some meal delivery services and meal kits just because it was a lot easier to prep stuff when I was newly postpartum and had a little newborn baby and had less time. So maybe that's something we'll look at as well. The third one I have is the Target Registry. And this one I think was the easiest for me this time around. It was not easy last time and let me explain. The reason it's so easy is because to qualify for it, you just have to create a target registry. That's it. I put zero things on this registry, just gave it my name and signed up with my email and all of that, created my registry. The difficult part is locating the gifts. I last time could not find it in store and was able to get it shipped to me. As long as you spend $35 and you get free shipping and there's tons of other stuff that I buy at Target anyway, so that was easy to do. This time around, I just happened to go to guest services, which is where you go to pick up these bags and asked on a whim and said, hey, do you happen to have the free baby registry gifts here in stock? And they said, oh yeah, let me go grab one for you. And they scanned my app to verify that I had a registry on my Target account and handed me the bag and I walked out the door and that was it. Last time I was calling from store to store to store, which I would still probably recommend that you call ahead to see if your store has them. If you happen to be maybe returning an item at Target and you're there already, you can go ahead and ask. And then the shipping kind of seems to come and go. I wasn't able to ship it this time around. So you can give that a try, but it's not necessarily gonna work. And depending on where you're located, it's sometimes tough if these are in stock. But the woman that I spoke to at Guest Services did say that they were having a lot of issues previously having these in stock, but they have since resolved them. So hopefully in 2024, that's gonna be less of an issue. And remember, this one's completely free. No shipping, nobody has to buy anything from your registry, all free. Three packs of sample wipes, repeats from the baby list, the water wipes, the honest wipes, and then also some Huggies natural wipes. Even more diapers, the same pack of the Huggies special delivery, size one, there's three of them in here. That was the same as the baby list. And then Millie Moon, which I've never tried and I've heard such great things about Millie Moon diapers. They seem like they're more of a luxury brand, but when you actually look at the price per diaper, it's on the more affordable end compared to what some luxury diapers are. It fits in more like the Huggies pricing. We did end up buying a lot of our diapers from Costco, so it's hard to beat that price, but Millie Moon is not that expensive. And this is a two pack of size one diapers and they're really cute pattern. So we will be trying those out. More repeats. We got the stretch mark cream from Palmer's. It didn't come with the oil this time and the stretch mark cream is smaller. Got the Aveeno Baby again. Every single box so far has had this with the two breast milk storage bags and two nursing pads, a triple paste. This is an all-in-one diaper rash ointment. I've never tried this, but we will give that a shot. 
Let's see what else. Gripe water, a sample there that also came with a coupon from Mommy's Bliss. It's $2 off gripe water, which is a good coupon there. Dapple baby soap, this sample, this would be really nice to take traveling, having just a little bit of bottle soap. And it also comes with a $1 off coupon. I would highly recommend Dapple products in general if you are hand washing any of your baby's products or if you are breastfeeding and pumping, they have some pump wipes that I really like. So happy to have a sample from Dapple and get a $1 coupon off of future Dapple products. Boogie wipes that are saline nose wipes and a $1 off coupon with these as well on the back. I tried these with our first, didn't find there to be a huge need to have specific wipes for baby's nose. We just used a Kleenex and didn't find that he had any irritation, but maybe if you have a baby with sensitive skin, you would prefer to use boogie wipes or just to add a little bit of moisture. There is a sample of Pedialyte, a grape flavor. There's also some Dreft scent boosters for baby wash. Probably won't use these again because I like doing fragrance free for baby. But if you are somebody that likes scent boosters, that's a nice little add there. It's probably just one laundry load worth. Two bottles in here. There is the Dr. Brown's bottle that we already got. So now we have two of these. This was in the Amazon box. And there is also a Philips Advent bottle. And I believe I got one of these last time. And I think part of what I liked about it is that it goes directly onto my Spectra pump. So if you have a Spectra pump, I'm pretty sure these bottles load right on there. The last big name baby box that you can get is from Walmart. And I tried to get it this time. It is one of the easier ones to qualify for. You just have to create a registry with Walmart. You scroll down, you select that you want the free box. You give them some information like your address and it should ship to you. But at the end of 2023, they were completely sold out. So I wasn't able to get one. I'll share an image of an example of what you can get in your Walmart box. But it was really disappointing that I wasn't able to get one myself. And that's something to just keep in mind with all of these things. A lot of them have these caveats of well supplies last or when available. So hopefully whenever you're pregnant, whenever you're watching this video, whenever you're trying to get these free products, everything's available for you, but I wouldn't count on it because things seem to fluctuate so much from month to month and year to year. If you're planning on formula feeding or even if you're planning on breastfeeding, it's still nice to have some formula around just in case. And there are a few different companies that will send you free samples of formula. And beyond the just in case for breastfeeding, if if you are planning on formula feeding and you don't know what's going to work well with your baby's digestive system because some babies are just more sensitive than others and some do better with some formula versus others it's great to get some of these free samples at the outset and you can try out a few different things and, and find what works best for your baby there's Enfamil, Similac, and Gerber all have programs that you can sign up for and just by signing up giving them your name and your email and your address they will send you free formula and they'll send you a lot of coupons. So if you need to repurchase things, it is a great way to go about it. Some of them also have rewards programs that you can sign up for. I did that with my first and got tons of formula samples. I was shocked. This time around, it was a little bit more difficult because I had already signed up with these programs. So I didn't know if I was gonna be able to get samples again. So I went into all three of those and put in an update in my profile saying that I had a second child or was expecting a second child and gave them my due date for baby number two and I did that let's see three months ago and the only one I've gotten anything back from is Enfamil so just by updating saying that I was pregnant again and expecting another baby they did send me two containers of formula and they sent an Enfamil Neuro Pro as well as their gentle ease version so i got those two samples and they sent coupons so i get 15 dollars off and five dollars off two separate coupons as well as it looks like they tossed in a few other things that i didn't see earlier more hello fresh this is 17 meals free earlier we got 18 meals free so that's probably the better deal 50 percent off shutterfly and then a coupon for portraits at JCPenney. Totally, totally free to do that. 
I'm curious to see if I do end up getting any more formula from the other companies. But so far this is it. And again, with a first time pregnancy, it was very successful and I got lots of formula. And I'm also mentioning how long it took because some of these do take longer than others. Some of them are really, really fast, like Amazon ships things quickly. Walmart boxes, I've heard of people waiting months and months and months to get. Baby list was maybe somewhere in the middle. It took a few weeks to get. So keep that in mind. And a lot of times they don't send you any form of tracking. You just sign up and cross your fingers and have no idea when these things are coming or if they're coming at all. One other success I had this time that I hadn't heard of last time was I was able to get some free diapers. I was able to get these Rascal and Friends diapers. And these were another one that were completely free. I just gave them my information, didn't pay anything for shipping. And it's two diapers. It's not a ton of diapers, but hey, two diapers is two diapers and you can pick whatever size you want and they will ship them straight to your house. There are a few other diaper companies that do have samples and sample boxes that you can get, but most of them do have a shipping cost or you just have to pay for the actual sample box in general. This was the only one that I could find that truly cost $0. There are some other things that I did try last time as well that were for bottle and breastfeeding that you might be interested in. Kindy is one where you can pay for shipping and they'll send you their starter kit. Kindy is this really interesting company that has come up with a whole system that you can attach directly to your breast pump and pump into breast milk storage bags. They have all these different adapters for different pumps. I ended up not using it because the system to continue using it is very expensive. My sister-in-law, I think, actually did like using the Kindy system. So if you are not sure what you want to use and you want to give it a try and you're willing to pay the shipping, that could be something you might be interested in. Nano Baby has a free sample kit free again because you have to pay shipping that has some good products in there. You just have to weigh the costs and benefits of what you're getting versus what the shipping costs is. If you want another big box like the Baby List or Target, Amazon, Walmart, there is a company that used to be called the Newbie Box and now they're called Hey Milestone. I think their shipping is $13 at this point, but you get a nice variety box of different things, but you have to pay that shipping cost. So not that far off from the baby list one where you have to pay almost $10 for shipping just to pay a little bit more. Hopefully this was helpful just to learn about the different options that are out there to get free or close to free baby items as well as what types of things you might find in these boxes. I hope that you stick around and watch some of the other videos I have here on my channel. Lots of videos about prepping for baby as well as videos for toddlers, activities, meals favorites for all of the stages of babyhood, whether it's toys or other most used items, lots of things here. And I would love to have you subscribe and stick around for more. And I really appreciate you being here as together we make this motherhood journey sophisticated. Finally time to pack my hospital bag. So I wanna share everything with you that I've packed for both myself and for baby. I am a second time mom, so I've learned a few things from the first time around. Some things that I'm not gonna bring that I brought the first time and a couple of other items that I didn't bring and wish I would have had. So I have the base weekender bag. That's what I'm gonna use as my hospital bag. It's about this big. It's pretty full. Last time I did bring a suitcase and a diaper bag. Right now, our diaper bag is being used for our toddler and I'm not planning on getting a second diaper bag. So I think I'm probably just gonna use this bag and I have a separate section for baby. And I found that in general, I just don't need as many things as I had last time. So I can fit everything in here. And I wanna start by going through the items that I have for myself. For clothing, I personally felt most comfortable just wearing the hospital gown for the majority of the time that I was laboring and giving birth. Some people choose to buy their own hospital gown and say they're uncomfortable in the one from the hospital. I didn't really have that issue. I, of course, was not wearing anything on the bottom with my hospital gown when I was in labor, and I chose not to wear a nursing bra while I was in labor or as I was giving birth. I just was comfortable that way, and then it made it a lot easier for quick skin-to-skin -skin right after I gave birth. So I don't plan on having anything for that 
whole period of time. The time that I need clothing is for when I am newly postpartum, right when I give birth and for going home. So for right after I give birth, my favorite thing to have is a long nightgown that has buttons up. So I have long sleeves just because I typically do get chilly. I know some people, especially when they're in labor, get warm and some people like to bring their own fan. My hospital, I know because I've been there before, they do have fans that they can provide if you get hot. I just don't. So when I am in the postpartum mom and baby area, this is pretty much what I wore last time. Just a nightgown with buttons for easy skin to skin access, breastfeeding access. I would highly recommend doing a nightgown just because you're gonna have nurses checking you and having pants right after birth is a little bit cumbersome. That being said, I am gonna bring one extra change of pajamas and I am gonna do a set that has pants and buttons up here in the front. It's the same brand. I will try and link all of this stuff in the description box below, but they're my favorite pajamas, whether I'm pregnant or not or postpartum or not and these I kind of want to bring just so I have a change maybe towards the end of my hospital stay especially if it's unexpected that I'm staying longer it's nice to have one change of pajamas or comfy clothes for myself and that's what I'll wear throughout the day is pajamas and I also pick these because they're just a lighter color and I think if I take pictures with our baby with the outfit that I'm packing for him the gray goes better and I know that's such a silly reason but I'm gonna have two pairs of pajamas one nightgown and one pair of pants and a button-up top fuzzy socks also a must in a hospital you can probably find hospital socks there but I love having these ones they have grips on the bottoms I did get them from Amazon last time I was pregnant to bring to the hospital with me I've worn them a whole bunch throughout the years I guess in between the kids and I would make sure you have ones that have grips on the bottom I believe some hospitals actually have a policy that you cannot wear socks if they don't have grips on them so for your own sake and safety just get ones that have grips on the bottom of them I'll just wear those around the hospital without shoes not worry about it too much but I also did pack a pair of shower shoes brought these last time as well the showers they do clean them in a hospital, but I just felt a little bit more comfortable showering with flip flops on, or you could always wear these as you're just walking around your hospital room, or if you do walk around the halls at all while you're either, I guess, in labor or after you give birth. It is nice to have a quick pair of shoes that you can slide on and ones that can get wet if you want to bring them in the shower with you. I didn't pack a lot of nursing bras this time. Last time I thought I was gonna be wearing nursing bras. Again, like I said, I didn't wear them while I was laboring. I do have one very comfortable one. Last time I brought these really, really structured ones. They were two-in-one pumping ones and all. It just was way too much for where I was at. I wanted to be soft and cozy with my snuggly newborn baby. So I have one that just drops down and pulls down and I can wear it with my pajamas if I want, if I want to feel a little bit more supported maybe if I have a visitor come or if I'm taking photos again just so I have a little bit more coverage to have a bra on but for the most part I felt pretty comfortable not having a bra on at all. Last time I also expected that I was going to be leaking milk that was completely untrue because for most women your milk doesn't come in until several days after giving birth so last time I packed nursing pads to put in my bras and all this other stuff around breastfeeding like like nipple cream and I can't even remember what else but most of that I did not use did not feel it was necessary so I'm just gonna have that one nursing bra for while I'm there in terms of a going home outfit I am going to bring a nursing cami with a loose fitting sweater. I'm gonna be giving birth in the winter time. And this is a trick that I learned last time from breastfeeding. I really loved the idea of having a cami on, like a tank top, so that when I'm wearing a sweater or another shirt, I can lift up and then unhook to feed my baby without showing my entire stomach and especially right after giving birth. I liked having something that was tighter across my stomach. So these tank tops, 
I wore them throughout my entire breastfeeding journey last time. This sweater is actually a maternity sweater, but it's meant to be one that can transition and be worn for non-maternity purposes as well. So this will be lovely to have, and I know it will be nice and cozy, and then I can still breastfeed pretty easily if I need to. And then in terms of pants, I am going to bring a pair of maternity leggings. I brought two pairs of leggings last time, I wanna say, just because I didn't know what was gonna go on with my body. So this time I'm just bringing one pair of maternity leggings and they are a pair of maternity leggings that feel pretty tight on me. I am quite far along in my pregnancy and they're starting to feel uncomfortable with how big I am. So I don't mind packing them away because I don't love wearing them right now. I liked them when I was a little bit smaller. So these will be great for when I'm newly postpartum and will have that support of something on my belly, but it won't be too tight and it also won't be too loose. The one thing I completely forgot last time was a fresh pair of socks to go home. But I had my fuzzy socks to wear there. I obviously wore clothing there, but I didn't really want to have to put on my old socks that I had worn to the hospital. Although I literally just wore them to the hospital. I am this time gonna pack a fresh pair of socks to wear home. And then in terms of underwear, last time I packed all of this postpartum underwear, I thought I was gonna be wearing it while I was in the hospital. I thought I was gonna wear it on the way home. That did not happen. The hospital will provide pads for you and diapers for you, those mesh panties. So if you wanna wear that while you're at the hospital, that's great. If you wanna wear that home, that's great. If you wanna put pads and underwear, go for it. I just really preferred having the adult diapers. I was okay with what they had in the hospital while I was staying there, but on the way home, I am gonna pack one of my own adult diapers. These are the always discreet ones, I believe, with like the little bow on them. These I truly felt were just so much more comfortable. It was much more sanitary to me to just change out my diaper every single time I went to the bathroom. So I'm gonna have one of these for the way home. And if I need more, I can always use what the hospital provides as well. And that's a really good note. If you are unsure of what types of things your hospital provides, you can always give them a call or you could talk to your OB or midwife at your next appointment and ask if they know the types of things that your hospital supplies, both for mother and for baby, just so you don't bring a bunch of unnecessary supplies that your hospital is already gonna have for you. A lot of hospitals, you don't need to worry about diapers and wipes. And like I mentioned, diapers and pads for yourself, a lot of them will have some dermaplast or spray that you can use in your pads or diapers to help with healing and recovery. They will have peri bottles typically. I know a lot of women, if you watch other YouTube videos or see what other women recommend bringing to the hospital, a lot of them will recommend the Freedom Mom Upside Down Peri Bottle. I have that one here at home. I'm not gonna bring it to the hospital with me. I didn't find that I really needed a peri bottle that much, though I didn't tear last time. I guess it probably depends, but I feel like I can probably get by with the couple of days in the hospital with the peri bottle they have. Then use mine that goes upside down and is more convenient when I get home. I'm just trying to minimize the amount of things that I bring. And yes, I want to be as comfortable as possible, but I also don't want to be weighed down by all of this stuff. So the only other things that I'm bringing for myself are a phone charger. That is very important if you can get a long cord, also nice because oftentimes the outlets are nowhere near your bed or they're like pretty far behind you or something. So if you want to be able to have your phone charging in a spot that you can reach, a long phone cord is essential. I last time also brought my iPad and my computer because I thought I was gonna have all of this downtime. I did, but I mostly slept when I could, or if I was in labor, I was in too much pain to be like typing away on my computer or watching a movie on Netflix or something. And if I did want to turn on the TV, I'd probably want it to be something that both my husband and I could watch. I pretty much entertained myself by the whole process of giving birth, talking to my husband, talking to the nurses. And of course, I always have my phone with me if I want to like text or call friends or scroll Instagram or something mindless like that that I typically don't have a lot of time to do. So I'm not gonna bring anything else other than my phone and a phone charger in terms of entertainment, I guess. I am going to bring quite a few toiletries. I'm bringing this just because it's convenient, it's not stuffed full. This is the same brand as my bag that I'm packing. It has a mirror in it. So if I do want to touch up a little bit while I'm in the hospital bed, 
that will be nice to have a mirror this time. And I also packed just a slight amount of makeup because if I am taking photos and stuff, I would like to feel my best. Mostly just things to correct the color of my skin. So like a concealer. I packed two makeup brushes. I really like to have blush on. So I packed blush, my two makeup brushes, a little powder, Let's see, a foundation, a concealer stick, mascara, and I think that's it in terms of makeup. So again, just some light face makeup and some mascara is pretty much all I need. Then in terms of other toiletries, I will also link all of these travel containers that I have. These are wonderful. So I loved taking a shower postpartum last time. This container does have shampoo, conditioner. I have a hairspray in here and then a heat protectant. Toothbrush and toothpaste, of course. I have a few different silk hair ties, one big scrunchie, one small one. Then I have some cotton rounds and some Q-tips so I can take off eye makeup remover I have. I also have a moisturizer and a face wash. One thing I did not bring last time was body lotion. Sometimes I get really itchy and just in general dry in hospitals. So having some lotion is very, very helpful and I didn't have it last time. So I'm gonna pack a little bit of lotion as well as chapstick top about dry lips and all of that. Hairbrush, so I'm gonna bring that. I luckily have two hairbrushes so I can pack this one, but I do want to bring like a hair straightener because my hair gets a little bit crazy if I don't apply heat to it. Again, I keep saying this, I'm gonna take photos or have visitors and stuff. I do wanna have the opportunity to just quickly run a straightener through it if I want to. So that's gonna be one of the things on my list of items that I can't pack right now because I only have one of them. Most of these things I can put away if you have an extra phone charger, things like that, you can have it all packed away. But if there are any of these items that you can't pack right now, I would make a list and put it physically on top of your hospital bag. So you know when you grab your hospital bag, oh yes, there are those last three things I couldn't pack and I am going to grab those right before we run to the hospital, of course, if you have time. So last time, for example, when I brought my computer, my iPad, I couldn't just pack those away for weeks and weeks. I needed to grab those right before we left. So I wrote that on a piece of paper. I would also recommend writing down that you need to have your ID, if that's not something you typically have on you, your health insurance, if you have a birth plan, if you pre-registered for your hospital and have other printed out paperwork, anything like that, write it out on a piece of paper, put it on top of your hospital bag so you don't forget. The great part about this bag is that it has a bottom compartment that you can unzip and it separates things. So I have all of the items for baby located on the bottom part just because there's a whole lot less. I didn't find that we needed a ton of things for the baby last time. And that's mostly because you don't wanna have them dressed while they're there. You can use little blankets to swaddle them. If you wanna bring your own swaddle, you can, but they have baby blankets for them. I have a little hat for them after they're born. And again, like I mentioned, most most hospitals should have diapers and wipes and all of that stuff for your baby. So it's really just a couple of things that you're gonna wanna bring. So I'm gonna open this up and we're gonna go through everything that's in here. Number one is you need a going home outfit, although they're not gonna be dressed while they're at the hospital necessarily. You need something to take them home in. I have one new outfit for this baby. The rest are pretty much hand-me-downs in the newborn size because we are having another baby boy. They're exactly two years apart, so they're the exact same time of year. So I didn't need to purchase a lot, but I did get this cute little milk and cookies onesie. What I love about this is that it has the built-in mittens. The feet are covered. Last time I think I packed mittens and all of this stuff, which just was not necessary. I prefer the sleepers that are zippers and have the built-in mittens and also have the feet covered. Great for winter. So this will be perfect for going home. The other thing is that since it's a winter baby, I have a blanket that we can put over our baby in the stroller and and he's not really gonna be going outside. My husband's gonna be heating up the car for us, pulling the car around, and we're gonna go straight from the hospital door, straight to the car door. And with an infant car seat, it's not like you have to have the car door open and you're buckling them in and stuff. It is like less than 30 seconds outside, so I don't need him too, too bundled up, but it will be nice to have a blanket just to keep him cozy for that little brief moment when we're outside and in the cold. The other thing that's nice for going home is a burp cloth or two 
you don't necessarily need it in the hospital. I think last time I brought more burp cloths, but of course you can just use their swaddles. They have so many of those and I can toss them in the wash for you. Don't make extra laundry or extra work for yourself if you don't have to. And then I have a couple of outfits to take cute photos in. I have one of those newborn gowns and a matching hat. Very, very cute. But when people say they're packing this as their going home outfit, it never makes sense to me. If you can explain this to me, I would love to hear in the comments below. But with the gowns, you tie them together. And if you're going to put them in their car seat, you need to have access between their legs to buckle them in. So though this would be really cute for photos in the hospital, it doesn't really make sense to me to have it as a going home outfit in an actual car seat. So this will be more so for photos. And this was what I was thinking would look better with light gray pajamas for myself if we're taking a cute little photo together because this is a really light baby blue. Last time I had a name sign made for our son Owen. This time I don't have a name sign made, but if you have something like that that you've made, that you want to have for photos bring that as well i do have a second outfit i'm not sure what i'm going to use for our newborn photos when we get home or other photos but i thought i'd just bring two options this does have his name on it so though i didn't have a name sign made for him this is embroidered with his name so i'm excited to reveal it that way with this cute little sweater and the hat and the booties matching and it comes in a few different colors i have a little bag for baby as well i grabbed two pacifiers that I put inside of these little orbs. So they say nice and clean and sanitized. Our hospital did provide pacifiers, but they weren't necessarily the ones that we loved. So this is the type that my pediatrician recommended. They are man pacifiers. They're two different styles. I think this type is newer and wasn't around when we had our first, but this one is one that we used with our first. So I thought I'd try and bring these. And of course I also have the one from the hospital to give a shot, but I wanna be focusing on breastfeeding and all of that. So I'm not dead set on pushing a pacifier at the beginning if it's not needed. And and we will always be able to go home where I have tons of other pacifiers to figure out which one works best for our baby. The other thing that I didn't bring last time, and it just totally depends on the baby, but I have a newborn nail file. This is one of the electric ones and it has a little light on it and it just is the best way to file baby's nails so that you don't cut them or don't have to worry about cutting them at all because those tiny little fingers are so delicate and sometimes babies come out with very, very long nails. So you don't have to worry about having them wear mittens all the time because you can just file their nails while they're in the hospital. So I'm going to bring this this time. Learned my lesson. And then last but not least for baby, I am going to bring a sound machine with a charger. This we did bring last time. Used all the time, introduced from the beginning, and our son still sleeps with the sound machine. It really helps, and especially right after they come out of the womb, having some noise is nice for them because they're so used to having noise. And then when they come out into the world and we go to bed, everything's silent. That's not what they're used to. So having a portable sound machine is really helpful. The only other thing I'm probably going to bring again and leave in the car and bring up if I feel like I need it is my nursing pillow. I did leave it in the car for the whole time last time, but I don't think I realized how much I would have appreciated a nursing pillow because I never used one before. So I am going to bring that in the car and potentially bring it upstairs if I feel like I want it and would be more comfortable with it. I last time did bring one of my pumps with me, my Spectra pump, because I had never pumped before and I heard advice that you could bring your pump to the hospital and talk to a lactation consultant, get a little bit of advice, make sure the flanges fit you properly, talk about different settings, and learn how to use it a little bit. I didn't actually end up really doing that. I think I brought my pump in and then thought about bringing it up to the lactation consultant, but I don't think really followed through with it. So I never really had a need to bring my pump with me. I am not going to be pumping the first couple of days anyway. So I'm gonna leave that at home, just the nursing pillow in the car. That is all I'm packing. I feel like it's a reasonable amount, especially because it fits in that one bag for both myself and for baby. Feels like I'm downsizing a little bit, which I think a lot of second, third, fourth time moms do, just bring less and less and less. I know a couple of things that I'm bringing are probably not necessary, like multiple pairs of pajamas or multiple outfits for baby, but sometimes it's nice to have something just in case. Again, I'm planning on having a vaginal delivery, but if you have a C-section or there are some complications and you're staying in the hospital longer, especially if you don't live near the hospital, it is nice to just be better safe than sorry, be a little bit more prepared, have a couple of extra items than be regretting and wishing that you had something. Like I said, that's it. If you think I forgot anything, 
please, please, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think I forgot so I can make sure I pack it before I head to the hospital and before I give birth to baby number two. I want to thank you. And we are getting to the end of pregnancy here. So I am going to do a few different freezer meals that are specifically really great for breastfeeding moms. I breastfed with my first baby for about 12 months, really hoping to be able to breastfeed with this baby. If you are not breastfeeding or if you have other members of your family and you're making these recipes, you can still eat them if you're not breastfeeding. They're safe for breastfeeding or not breastfeeding, but I thought it'd be fun to share these specific freezer friendly recipes for moms that are looking to boost their milk supply. I will also have some great postpartum meal prep ideas and freezer meals on my other channel, Sophisticated Organization, show you all of the other things I'm making. But for today, we're gonna start with some pumpkin lactation muffins. And I am going to link the recipes that I use in the description box below. But I'm starting by adding a lot of my dry ingredients that I got together. I quickly made some oat flour just by taking whole oats and blending them up in the blender. And then I added in some brown sugar. I have a little bit of salt here. Let's see, I have baking powder. I need a couple teaspoons of that. As well as a couple of teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. And the reason that I'm doing these pumpkin pie, pumpkin spice, muffins is because there's a few different lactation foods or foods that help potentially produce extra milk and one of them is pumpkin and that's something I didn't know. I am not a lactation expert by any means but I did see that pumpkin is high in fiber and iron and can be a great way to help boost your milk supply. Another thing is flaxseed will be in here as well as brewer's yeast. If you've never seen before brewer's yeast in your grocery store, you can typically get this on Amazon. I'll try and link that in the description box if you are interested. And it does last a while. It's a pretty big container. It's a supplement, again, that's fine if you're breastfeeding or not breastfeeding. So safe for anybody else in the family. But those kind of three ingredients plus the oats, oats are really, really great to boost milk supply, is gonna make a great healthy muffin. So I'm gonna keep adding in the ingredients and check back in just a second. Now I'm just mixing together all of the dry ingredients before I start adding in some of the wet ones. And something else to note is that oftentimes, or I guess sometimes, babies can have allergies to dairy. So if you wanna be really careful when you're making postpartum freezer meals, you might want to avoid dairy just in case your baby has some sort of an intolerance. You'd hate to make especially a ton of freezer meals and find out that your baby has a dairy intolerance and then you have all these meals that you can't eat. Of course, the rest of your family could enjoy it, but I'm just specifically choosing to use almond milk just in case something happens where I wanna try eliminating dairy from my diet to see if that helps with any potential issues that we might run into. But feel free to use whatever milk you want. I have my canned pumpkin and my egg here. And then there are a few options when it comes to mix-ins. I'm choosing just to add in some dried cranberries, some craisins, because that's what I happen to have. You could also do raisins or you could do chocolate chips. I will also put in the description box a link to the lactation cookies that I make. I'm not going to make them in today's video. I'm focusing on slightly healthier, I think, options. Last time when I had a baby, I found myself feeling like I wanted to try and eat a little bit healthier after giving birth. 
and having a bunch of things with like chocolate chips in it and cookies and you can make lactation brownies by sneaking in some of that brewer's yeast as well. I just want to have a few healthy options on hand and can always make sweet treats later. So the last things that you're doing is just adding in the whole oats as well as your mix-ins. I'm not even measuring that. I'm going to mix it all up and then we'll get it into some muffin cups and into the oven. Tired snowflakes are coming down. Collapse into water when they hit the ground. I hear the sound of empty streets. Yesterday has gone to sleep. Muffins are done, so I'm going to label my freezer gallon size Ziploc and just write what's in here. I'm going to write the date that I baked them just so I know how long I have and mark that they are lactation friendly. So I'm going to write pumpkin lactation muffins and then just put them into my freezer bag, try and get as much air out as possible and stick them in the freezer for postpartum after baby. Hold my hand and hear the words I say. Close your eyes and let us fade away. Build a secret place for you and me. A really great breakfast or snack option is a healthy smoothie and you can make them lactation friendly or give yourself a little bit of a lactation boost with a couple of things that you can do. I'm going to show you three different variations. The first one I'm going to do is a lemon blueberry smoothie. So I'm going to, I have one fresh banana here, so I'm going to peel this and get it into my freezer bag, you can use a smaller size just because we're making single serve smoothies here. I am going to get my blueberries and I'm not measuring any of this. I'm doing like about a cup, I would say maybe of blueberries for one banana. And then I'm just gonna roll this over and zest a lemon straight into the bag. Now, a few ways you can boost your smoothies and make them lactation smoothies, I guess. One way is to boost it by the ingredients. So some of the things that we've already talked about, like pumpkin or oats, feel free to add flax seeds, chia seeds, a lot of like healthy fats, nuts will do that. But you can also add some extra boost with the liquid you're adding. So with this smoothie, because I'm doing a lemon blueberry, I have a lemon lactation tea. I'm not sure if they still make this one, but it's the Munchkin Milk Makers lactation tea in the lemon flavor. They also do have a berry flavor. So you can get creative and make just a berry smoothie and use your lactation tea as a liquid, especially if you're somebody that doesn't like tea in general, that might be a really good way to get the lactation tea in without having to just drink it straight. Another great thing about not freezing the liquid because I'm gonna write on the outside of the bag just what liquid I want to put in there, is if for some reason you don't respond well to a certain ingredient, that might be in one of these lactation teas or one of the other potential milks or something you might mix into a smoothie. You can easily mix it up and change it without having to throw away your entire smoothie. So you'll see I just added in the zest of one lemon and the juice from half a lemon. And that's pretty much all I'm going to put in there. You can feel free to really make these your own. Another thing that you can do that I didn't really know is that you can put protein powder in your smoothies and other powders in your smoothie packets and freeze it that way. So feel free to do that. You can add in a little boost of the brewer's yeast. 
that I showed you just a second ago with those muffins, but I am just gonna write here, blue berry lemon lactation smoothie. And then I'm just gonna write what liquid I wanted to add. So add lactation tea is what I'm gonna say. And again, I can always mix that up. So there is my little smoothie pack and I can easily pull it out of the freezer, drop it into my blender. I like to try and keep it frozen in a shape like this because I have an individual blender and I can drop it in really easily. If you freeze it really wide, it might not fit into your individual blender shape. So keep that in mind as you're freezing things that sometimes they can form a pretty solid rock and make it really difficult. The next smoothie that I am going to make is probably the easiest one. You can really make this your own as well. I have some frozen peaches and mangoes here, but you could also do really any tropical fruit like pineapples, you could add some strawberries in, but this is just what I already have on hand. And I'm going to add these in here. Those are the peaches. And then, let's see if this is all frozen together, some mango chunks. Move that out of the way. I have some already frozen banana here. I'll add in not even quite a full banana. And then I'm just going to clear this out of the way and I'll be right back. So for this one, I'm also going to add in a little bit of chia seeds here. I mentioned that's another great boost. So I'm going to scoop those in and liquids that I would recommend for this one. If you want to keep it really light, Coconut water is a really great way to hydrate. A lot of breastfeeding comes down to hydration. You're gonna to wanna to be drinking a lot of liquid just because there's a lot coming out of you as well. And in general, great to stay hydrated as you are newly postpartum. But coconut water itself is a great way to hydrate and would keep this smoothie really light and fresh. Coconut in general is another great lactation boost. So you could do coconut milk and I would probably just do the boxed coconut milk with this one so it doesn't get too heavy. So I'm just going to write my suggested liquids and again what smoothie it is. So I'm just writing peach mango lactation smoothie and add coconut water slash coconut milk. Just kind of depending on what mood I'm in and I'm going to do it the same way. Really try and get out that air and keep it in a nice elongated shape. Then finally, for my last smoothie, we're gonna make this one really rich and decadent. And it's gonna have some banana again, some peanut butter. So I'm gonna do a full banana for this one because there isn't a lot of other frozen fruit or no other frozen fruit. We are gonna do a full banana. I'm gonna add a scoop of chocolate protein powder in here. There are a couple of lactation powders specifically that you can use, and that would be a great thing to add in as well. But again, there are sometimes just some ingredients that might not agree with you and your lactation. So keep that in mind if you're gonna be adding in a lactation specific ingredient into your smoothie directly. I added a tablespoon of peanut butter, I am going to do a tiny bit of brewer's yeast in here. Honestly, just a little shake. I'm going to add some flaxseed, another great boost. And then to top this one off, we are going to add in some oats. And probably just about like a quarter cup or so. There. Again, is mostly dry ingredients in here plus that banana. So to make this more filling and to fill you up, I would do canned coconut milk in this. This will make it so rich and delicious. And you can also add in a few extra ice cubes as you're blending it to give it more of a smoothie feel. So I am going to write all of that down on here and I'm also going to 
mark that I put brewer's yeast in here just so future me knows that I did add brewer's yeast if for some reason that's not agreeing with me. I know that this smoothie pack has that in there. I have all three of my smoothie packs. I'm gonna put them in the freezer before they get thawed out too much and all of this frozen fruit starts to melt. But again, you can really do this with any smoothie, any recipe that's a favorite of yours and add in some of these specific ingredients that I talked about. Prepping these in advance, though it seems trivial, really does make morning time or snack time a little bit easier when you have a newborn baby. And you can easily right now double or triple these. Maybe don't make 10 of one particular smoothie if you've never tried it before, just in case you don't like the flavors together. But it is a great protein packed snack and I'm excited to have these postpartum. The final recipe we're gonna make today is an easy lactation ball or lactation bite. These energy balls, and energy bites, you can find all over the internet. And you don't have to use a recipe that's specific to lactation just because kind of by default, a lot of these recipes are gonna have really great lactation friendly ingredients. I just added two cups of oats to my bowl here. Oats again, great, great lactation friendly item. I have a few different recipes that I am going to link in the description box below if you want to try a few of my favorite variations. But feel free to really do whatever you want with these. I don't always measure stuff and sometimes just go off of the feeling of it. I just added in flax and chia seeds to mine here. But I'm gonna keep this one really basic with a peanut butter and oat and honey, a little bit of vanilla extract. But some of the other recipes I'm gonna link, I have one that's a pumpkin one, a really great apple one, and there's a lemon one with lemon and coconut that has ground up cashews in it. You have to try that one, it is delicious. But one of the most common and basic energy balls or lactation ball recipes is just gonna be this basic one with nut butter and oats. You can add in any mixins that you want, so whether it's dry fruit or chocolate chips, if you want them to be a little bit of a sweet treat, you can do that as well. So I'm gonna add in all these ingredients and then we will roll them up and they are freezer friendly as well. Let our minds be caught up in a dream. Quiet voices in the night. Time is running out of sight. Passing by tries to carry all the whispers that it finds. The walls are listening when we talk, making echoes as we walk. There's no one left. Hold my hand and hear the words I say. Close your eyes and let us fade away. almost due with baby number two and I thought it'd be fun to share with you the process of building some baskets with little goodies to thank the nurses who helped me with labor and delivery and also postpartum. I did this with my first. I shared it on my other channel, Sophisticated Organization, but this time I'm going to share it over here and the process really isn't that difficult. I grabbed an organizing bin from Target. I grabbed one that is a decent size so I can fit quite a few different items in here. I chose pretty much whatever was the cheapest. You could also obviously go to a dollar store and find something really, really cheap. And I'm just filling it with some extra little fluff here to build it up. And I wanna start off by saying that this is not a necessity at all to do anything like this. I don't think nurses expect it. I've seen a lot of comments on social media about these types of baskets and people saying things like, why are you doing this? This is their job to be your nurse and to help you deliver your baby. But it's just such an exciting time in life. And I think there are certain nurses that go above and beyond. A lot of times they are overworked and it's just a nice way to say thank you. And I know the nurses I had last time really appreciated it. And there's a few 
few ways to do this as well. The first way is to do a basket or two, maybe one for the day shift and one for the night shift and have it brought to the nurse's station. Have your spouse bring it there or give it to one of your nurses to bring out to the nurse's station to share with all of the nurses. Another one that you could do is an individual thank you for the specific nurses that help you. So you probably wouldn't be as likely to build a very large basket for each specific nurse that helps you, especially depending on how long your hospital stay is and how many day shift and night shift switches that you have. I am going to do a combination this year. Last time I just did two large baskets, one for day shift and one for night shift. This time I am going to do the same, but I'm also going to just do a little bit of personalized thank yous for individual nurses, which I'll share at the end here. But the combination of things I'm putting in is I am just going to get some drink items in here. And honestly, it doesn't really matter the specific things you're putting in here because you don't of course know who you're shopping for. I think a lot of nurses I've seen really like beverages. So I'm adding in a few different sparkling waters. I wanna make them all so they're the same direction here. I just have a variety of flavors. And because I'm gonna be doing two baskets, I'm gonna split everything up. So this is eight cans of mini Starbucks Frappuccinos. They are white chocolate mocha, a little bit of caffeine and kind of a treat. Also nice to find things that are in mini size so you can have more nurses take advantage of what you're bringing without filling up the basket too, too much. Then one of the obvious things is snacks. I got a mixed bag here of Skinny Pop, Pirate's Booty, and Sweet and Salty Skinny Pop. So I'm gonna do a couple bags of each of these and I think a combo also of like some healthier snacks, some more indulgent snacks. I know some people will add like chocolate and things like that just because there are so many different taste preferences. So these will be great. I'm just gonna do two of each in this basket. It's already filling up really fast. And then I got some trail mix that does have M&Ms. So maybe it's both healthier and not healthy at the same time. I have some mini granola bars again. Anything that I could find in mini, I was kind of drawn towards that. And these ones are cashew, cherry, almond, and cocoa drizzle. Then I grabbed some mini peanut butter filled pretzels. Everyone loves peanut butter filled pretzels. And then I grabbed some packages of individually wrapped partake cookies. Now I'm just gonna stuff all of this in here. See how much I can fit. <laughs> I can already tell it's just going to be so stuffed in here. I'm just going to layer it up as best I can. I did do a little bit of rearranging just so you can see everything that's in there. I moved the cans in front and put the taller items like these popcorn bags in the back. I found some of these hot chocolate spoons at Target on sale. So I am going to put some of these in, which are a little bit more of a treat. I feel like they can't use them at the hospital, which is a little bit less convenient, but something that they can take home with them. And speaking of that, just anything that's individually wrapped is something I kind of look for. Let's see if I can fit these back here because I know I'm running out of space. Anything that's individually wrapped is a great candidate to be putting in your nurse's baskets. Okay, I got all of those in. And then the next category of things that I purchased is something that the nurses would hopefully appreciate, whether they're things like little pens. I've heard nurses love pens. I also got some claw clips. You could do hair scrunchies, things like that. I love pampering myself, so I got a set of sheet masks that I'm gonna put in there. And then last time I was in the hospital, I saw every single nurse basically with a Stanley cup with a straw or some sort of Stanley dupe. And so I was looking for fun accessories for Stanley cups and found these cute daisy straw covers. I thought these would be adorable to include because so many nurses have cups like that. So I got a little pack of these. There's a multi-color set and I am going to add all of this stuff in there. So it's not just food items, but also some fun little gifts that they can take home with them as well.
This is the final product. And I again want to reiterate, do not feel pressured to do this at all, especially if it's not in your budget or don't feel like you have to spend a certain amount of money. You can do it like this. You can do it bigger than this, a little smaller than this, whatever works for you. I was just really excited and wanted to get a bunch of different things. The only other thing I'm going to add to these baskets is a little sign on here saying, thank you and the fact that it's from myself and from my husband last time i did this i put a maternity photo of us on there so you can include a photo of yourself but just adding a little note so they know who it's from and thanking the nursing staff would be a really nice way to tie it all together and before you leave i did promise i'm going to show you what i'm going to do for the individual nurses so i'm going to get that stuff together and show you that the other option of giving nurses individual gifts is something that i kind of want to do this time I've heard of people doing it on the spot and giving gifts to nurses before they end their shift and before the next nurse shows up. I've also heard of people specifically sending gifts to the nurses that helped them after they've gone home and sending them a little gift. Somebody said that they did actually send nurses each a Stanley cup, the ones that went above and beyond and were just wonderful. So you could do that and just skip the whole basket thing for all of the nurses and anybody that you feel like just makes your experience that much better or helps you through the process, get them just a specific gift, you can do that. I am probably going to have a few of these individual gifts made and then I'll just decide whether I'm gonna give it to every nurse that helps me and is my individual nurse or if I'm just gonna give it to those that I feel like are really wonderful and go above and beyond. It's a little bit personal for me because I have these things at my disposal. So if you do follow my other channel, Sophisticated Organization, you know that I sell some products on my website. I have daily, weekly, and to-do list little planner pads. I thought these would be great for busy nurses. These whiteboards that I have too, I'm gonna to give each of them a whiteboard marker as well. They say make today sophisticated and I always write out my to-do list on here, but it will just be really nice to give a few like little office supplies and I'm just going to tie them up with a ribbon and that is pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this quick video of what I'm putting together in my baskets to thank nursing staff as well as individual gifts when I go into labor with our second baby. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. I have so many other videos related to motherhood, baby prep. I'll obviously be sharing stuff postpartum. I also have an older toddler, so I'll be sharing things about him. And I want to thank you for joining me today as together we make this motherhood journey sophisticated. It is getting close to baby time, so today I'm going to prep the rolling cart I have here at my bedside. I'm also gonna go through some of the postpartum supplies that I have in my bathroom to get ready for that whole postpartum period and take you along with me. So if you're ready for it, let's get going on this cart. Okay, so I wanna go over what I just put in there and grabbed obviously a whole bunch more things. So in the top, because I not only am gonna have a newborn, but I also have, I'm going to have an almost two-year-old at the point that our baby will be born. I have a few things for both kids. So I have diapers in my son size, as well as in a newborn size up here. I have lotion that's good to use on both the baby and my toddler. I have some Aquaphor. 
Another little lotion, um, a mini Eucerin cream here. I have wipes and then I put some pacifiers in here. That'll be really great to have in the middle of the night to have close by because I feel like they just always get lost. And then I put a few more random supplies in here that are really great for newborns. So I have the nose Frida. This is kind of in two parts. This is to suck the boogers out of baby's nose. I also use some saline spray when I use that. So I have that here. I have this helpful little comb for cradle cap. I also have this picker tool, which was one of my favorites with our son. It has a nose picker, an ear picker, a nail picker, and then like a multi-use tool, as well as an electric nail file. And all of these are honestly baby must-haves and things that I found myself doing when I was nursing our first son. So I'm thinking because I'll be hanging out here in bed a lot that I will do the same. And this will be a really handy spot to have all of this. I originally put it in our son's bathroom when he was born and just we were going back and forth and back and forth. So I think this will be a much better spot to have it. And I also grabbed to stick in here a haka because I hope to breastfeed and this will be helpful to have handy if I want to collect some milk on the other side that I'm not feeding on. Stick that in there. And then previously I had in this cart some toys for our toddler. I think I'll probably still have some toys in here just in case it's me alone and I'm trying to keep him occupied while I have a baby and all of that. So I will figure out how I wanna do this. I like having all these little things up higher because my older son can't reach it as much and maybe things down lower are better for him to reach or things that he can't mess up. So I'm also gonna get some snacks together because breastfeeding makes me really hungry. And a lot of times I'm just still hanging out in bed, nursing the baby and taking care of things and don't have a lot of time to go prepare myself breakfast or maybe in the middle of the night I'm hungry. So I have some snacks. I also have burp cloths. Those are a must. I got these little changing pads last time. Very, very helpful. They are waterproof and I lay them out on the bed to change the baby's diaper because a lot of times there can be explosions. Nice to have an extra layer there. I also grabbed an extra swaddle and I'll probably save some room for maybe like a blanket and an extra pair of pajamas because if there's an accident in the middle of the night, I'm gonna wanna have those things to make a change really quickly. So let's get all of this stuff organized. Most of the stuff in my bathroom I already have pretty organized, but I wanna walk you through all of it just in case you are pregnant and heading into this postpartum period so you can prepare yourself as well. I have all of this stuff in here for all of these fluctuating phases that I've been going through. And since I have so much space in my bathroom, I've just left it this way. So I have things that I'm not using right now and won't be using when I'm newly postpartum, like ovulation supplies and pregnancy test. So I have two little containers here for those. Those I'm just going to leave as is. And then I have one for, I just call medical supplies, kind of fluctuates, but great for postpartum having these tux wipes. These ones are the medicated and cooling pads. I also have, just to be prepared, some hemorrhoid cream in here because after you give birth, especially if you have vaginal delivery, hemorrhoids can be pretty common. So some medical supplies there. And then I have a smaller bin called postpartum care. This I have the Freedom Mom healing foam. 
This stuff is great. It's also similar to Dermaplast, which you might have in your hospital. You can also purchase that as well. I just liked the foam of this a lot. And then a carry bottle, which is really helpful. This is also the Frida brand. I'm sure you've heard about it a lot. It is the upside down carry bottle. So it can spray upwards towards you to clean. Again, you will probably get a peri bottle in the hospital, but it won't be an upside down one. It'll just be a little bottle with a top that you can squeeze. So it's kind of hard to maneuver and I would really recommend this Frida set, both the healing foam and the peri bottle together. I also have up here just feminine products in the sense of tampons and pads and panty liners all the way up to diapers. So tampons you're not gonna be using when you're newly postpartum and bleeding. You're gonna to wanna to use pads. The hospital will have diapers as well or really big pads to give you. I prefer the diapers that I can purchase. So I have some left over. There are two different types that I like three maybe. There I have some left over that I have from my last pregnancy and I think one of them is even a Freedom Mom one. And then these ones which are left over, I also have some flushable wipes here. So that's my larger postpartum care and I will refresh it with some diapers that I just got from Amazon. I haven't tried these ones personally yet but I've heard great things about them. I think they were previously a different brand or a different name or a different packaging or something but this one has come highly recommended so I have a large pack of these and I honestly prefer just the adult diaper than the pad situation it's just a whole lot easier you can just toss them away it's more comfortable at least for me but I do have in a feminine product thing here, some pads for once the bleeding does get lighter because then I don't wanna be wearing the diapers anymore as the bleeding gets lighter. And then some panty liners for when it gets even, even lighter, just so I have that whole process that I can work through and don't have to worry about running out to the store and purchasing those things or dealing with running out of things while I'm in the bathroom. It is all here and ready to go for me. The last thing that I have in here, and you don't necessarily need to keep this in the bathroom, but I had space here and it just kind of worked out but I keep my disposable nursing pads in here. I found sometimes I'd just be like getting ready in the morning, going to the bathroom or getting ready for the nighttime. And these are the daytime ones and the nighttime ones. I typically use reusable ones that I can just wash in the washing machine because at least with my last baby, I did have a lot of leaking when I would feed him. So I did need something to help absorb that milk as I was feeding throughout the day and throughout the night, but sometimes I was lazy and just wanted these reusable ones, or these disposable ones, excuse me. So I have these here and have a little label for nursing pads. But that's all the stuff I keep ready to go in the bathroom for me to make that postpartum period a little bit easier. Last but not least here, I have my large storage bin where I store all of my maternity clothing, but I also store postpartum things in here just because I don't have enough maternity stuff to fill this whole bin. So I am going to pull out this stuff to make it easier for my postpartum period so it's all ready to go for me. A lot of it is going to be nursing bras and nursing supplies. So some of my favorites are actually from Target. They are more of a workout bra. I really, really enjoy those. I do have some from Kindred Bravely, which are very popular, but weren't my favorite. I think this is their older style, so their newer style might be better. These are the Target ones. I also have a couple of items that are specific to breastfeeding. They're breastfeeding friendly because they have little zippers and stuff to access what you need to access. So I can pull that clothing out. Let's see, I also have more like structured bras for nursing. I have those reusable nursing pads that I was talking about, so I'll get all of those out. I did last time use some underwear specifically for that beginning postpartum period because it's higher waisted and really felt like it kept things in. A lot of times people say that they feel better 
postpartum having something tight around their stomach you might think it's the opposite if you've never gone through this you might think you want to wear loose baggy clothing but sometimes it feels better to have that support so the higher waisted postpartum underwear are kind of helpful i also do have a belly binder or something that i can strap around my belly that does help feel like it's holding everything in. It made me feel like a little bit more confident being so newly postpartum, but I've heard that there are great benefits, both vaginal birth and C-section to using something like this. I have my maternity nursing camis. These probably got the most use out of anything. These I would wear all the time and layer a shirt on. So especially if I was nursing out in public, I could lift my shirt up and just unclip the clasp on the cami and put my baby kind of under the top layer of shirt without feeling like I was exposing my whole stomach lifting my shirt up to feed my baby and around the house it's a lot easier so I wore those all the time and then the last thing that I used pretty often was these heatable and freezable gel packs I looks like I have two sets of them uh, because I use them so often and I wanted one to be in the freezer ready for me depending on what situation I was going through with breastfeeding if I was going through some engorgement or wanted to encourage the milk so I'm going to put all of this stuff away and make a little bit of space in my dresser move around some of my current bras and tank tops and stuff and make a good spot for this because this stuff, especially nursing stuff, I will probably be using for a full year. That's what I did with my first son is I nursed him for a year. So this stuff was out and needed a home and a permanent home for at least a year. So I am going to get all this put away. I can put this empty, almost empty, bin away. And then once I have the baby, I can pack up all of my maternity clothing and that is pretty much it for what I'm doing in my bedroom to prep and in this space. If you have any other ideas of things that you are doing or have done in your room, I would love to hear them. Of course, there's plenty of other things that I need to do around the house to prep for baby. I have some little diaper caddies that I like to have around the house to make changes easier. The last thing I need to do in here is to bring up the bassinet. That I'm gonna ask my husband to help with. But today is the day that I am redoing the nursery closet organization. I have a full video of when I first organized this for our first baby, which I will link if you're interested in watching. But today it's getting a refresh because our older son, Owen, moved to his big boy room and now it's time to get this nursery back in shape for baby number two. I have already loaded up all of the hanging clothing there and did that in a separate video going through all of Owen's old baby clothing. So again, I will link that as well. That is on my Sophisticated Motherhood channel. But today it is closet day and I have started by pulling everything out. Most of the things that are in the closet are more baby and newborn related and everything that's for Owen or toddler items I have already pulled out but it is a mess. I've done no reorganizing of everything. I've just thrown some things into bins, so I really need to go through it. The first thing that I'm doing is reorganizing the extras bin that I have. The first time I organized this closet, it was a diaper bin and a separate white bin and all of these different bins. But an organizing tip I always have in general is to keep your labels really broad. And I don't know why I didn't follow my own advice when originally organizing the nursery closet. So I halfway through changed it and just called this bin extras. So whatever type of extras I might have, I can put in there and the label still fits. So right now it's diapers and wipes and some diaper cream and the diapers that I have you'll see are all scrunched up and that is because my work put on a baby shower for me last time I saw them in person and they made one of those diaper cakes if you've ever seen where you roll up the diapers and it looks like a layered cake almost but it's made out of diapers and I was able to take the diapers home with me. It's kind of a fun thing because it's a useful gift with the diapers but it's also really cute but the diapers don't sit as nicely as the ones that come straight out of the package so I was trying to unroll them and lay them really flat and was going to load them up into this diaper caddy that previously had bigger diapers for Owen and now is going to have these smaller diapers for baby. 
then there's space to load up the rest of the diapers that I had that were still in nice packaging. I had half a pack of newborn diapers and half a pack of size one diapers that I was able to put in here as well as the rest of my Kirkland wipes and the diaper creams that I mentioned. I did put a bunch of newborn and size one diapers into his dresser already. I have a separate video for that as well, organizing the dresser. So another video I'll link if you're interested in the dresser organization. Okay, the other things I'm gonna put into this diaper caddy include the Dapple all-purpose wipes. These are great. I'm also gonna include my Tubby Todd favorites, a diaper cream, all-purpose ointment, and a lotion, as well as my favorite stain remover. This is really nice to have in the bedroom to spray it before I put it in the laundry, and then a nursery spray. I pulled out half of the books that were in this closet, all of the books that were more so meant for older kids and left in all of the younger kid type books. So I'm going to consolidate because before it took up two rows of books in this closet. And now that I have half the books in Owen's new big boy room, I can get these smaller little kid books all together on one shelf and free up a little bit of space. I'm keeping it in rainbow order just because I think that looks so cute. It looks really nice and neat and organized but cute in a nursery or in a little kid's room to add a little bit of color. These Jelly Cat books were some of Owen's favorites. They are very simple books and have lots of touch and feel moments in them. So I pulled those out just because the shelf was a little bit full, but also because I liked having this collection pulled out when Owen was little and using it as a separate display moment because it has all of those fun tales with each animal and fits his jungle or safari themed room. Next up, I'm gonna get all the baby shoes organized. We have some shoes that I was able to save from Owen, a few new pairs of shoes, some he never wore, especially those little tiny baby shoes he never wore. We got some new ones because the ones that were probably around like a 12 month size, he completely wore through because they didn't have hard soles on them. And he started doing a ton of walking then. So those I had to replace, but I got a monitor stand from Amazon meant for like a computer monitor. And it works perfectly for these baby shoes to keep them separated and looking nice and organized. The other thing I had to take down when Owen got a little bit older was the mobile. I'm happy that I'm having baby number two back in this room so I can reuse the mobile in here. And then I'm in the closet going through the hanging items. Like I said, I already went through and hung everything. Most of this is hand-me-downs from Owen, but I'm so excited to have two little boys who are two years apart and have them in matching outfits. So I couldn't help myself and have already bought a few new pieces for the baby to match some new outfits that I got for Owen. So I'm just going to take all of the tags and stickers off of those items. And I haven't rewashed anything in the closet yet. I did rewash all of the items that I put in the dresser in the newborn and zero to three month size. So I'll also do that in the closet, newborn and zero to three month, which I don't have a lot of hanging items in that size, but I will make sure to do that. And then as he gets older and gets to the bigger sizes, I will rewash those as well, just because some things are new, have never been washed before. I like to wash them before my kids wear them and some of the other things have just been sitting in storage for a year or since they'll be two years apart by the time he fits in whatever size. It will have been about two years since Owen wore it so it probably just is kind of stale smelling and could use a refresh. I'm unloading the rest of the things that don't need to be in the closet there and then going through the remainder of the bins. There's not a lot of stuff in here right now. I have one bin for clothing accessories that I'm going through right now. All hand-me-down things from Owen. I have another bin that says stuff for mommy that has a extra sound machine 
extra pieces for the monitor, a couple of other random items. The memory bin is empty and then I'm going to load it all up in the closet here and I'm sure I'll fill it up with more stuff once baby number two has more stuff. And then because these bins don't fit perfectly across, I'm going to add a little bit of decor there. Decor meaning books and an ultrasound photo. And then a fun way to add decor into a nursery is to have a jar full of pacifiers. I just need to pull out the old ones from Owen that I don't want to reuse. I need to purchase some new ones for baby number two. And that is it. I'm going to show you what the final after of the closet looks like. Thanks so much for joining me for this really quick nursery closet organization refresh. Lots more organizing projects to come. And as always, if you're interested in more of the mom content and other things that are going on with my pregnancy, make sure to subscribe to my other channel, Sophisticated Motherhood. But until next time, I will see you all later. Hey everyone, my name is Sophie from Sophisticated Organization and today we are going to do a dresser organization for our new baby who is hopefully arriving in a few months here. So I'm starting to get ready and prep the dresser because we moved our son Owen to his big boy room just down through the bathroom there. There's a Jack and Jill bathroom. This was previously his nursery and I decided, I went back and forth, but I decided that I'm just gonna keep this room the nursery, keep it pretty much as is, and just give it a good organizational refresh. And there are a few lessons learned from having a baby in here before that I am upgrading in terms of organization. So before, all I had on top of the dresser was the little diaper caddy with diapers, and I didn't have anything in the dresser beyond clothing sleep sacks and extra sheets and blankets and things like that. I didn't have any diapers or other items really. So I want to add some extra backstock diapers in here to make it very simple to refresh and restock that acrylic diaper caddy that I have on top as well as some wipes. And then I think I'm also going to find some space hopefully to add in burp cloths and stuff. But I still have that in the washing machine. I am washing a lot of the clothes. Clothing. I have already organized it and sorted it just because as Owen grew out of sizes, I put them into bins in our guest room closet based on the size. And I have a lot of clothing and a lot of loads of laundry to do. So I washed them in loads just to keep them already separated so I didn't have to re-go through everything. And since Owen is almost two, I have clothing all the way up to 18 months pretty much that he's grown out of. But I don't think I have enough space to load up the dresser with that many sizes of clothing. And I also don't wanna wash everything at once because I want things to kind of be fresh for the new baby. So I've decided just to wash things that are newborn size as well as zero to three months. And then as he gets a little bit older and we get closer to moving to three to six, six to nine, or larger sizes, then I'll wash those as we get closer. But what I'm gonna do in each category is basically just sort it on the floor like I'm doing right now. I like to do this when I'm folding laundry in general because it makes it a lot easier to just mentally get in the space of this is how I'm folding a sleeper, this is how it fits. So I'm gonna do the same thing over and over and over again and then move to the next category of clothing. Also makes it easier to make the piles and understand how many of each item I have so I can account for space as I'm organizing the dresser. It's so fun going through all the clothing and most of this, like 90 something percent of it, is all of Owen's old clothing. So just reminiscing on all the outfits he used to wear when he was really, really little. And it makes me so excited for another baby to come and to use all of this clothing. And it's also just nice, the fact that we're having another boy and all of this clothing will work for baby number two as well. And I can save a lot of money that way and just take advantage of the clothing that we already have. 
I will say I have bought a few new outfits because I'm just excited about having two boys and having them match every now and then. So as I'm buying Owen some new clothing for the next size that he's moving up to, every now and then I've been tempted to look and see if they have a matching baby outfit for it. And I have bought a couple of new things. So there were a few items that I had to cut tags off of before washing, but again, most of this is just hand-me-down outfits. Something that I like doing in the newborn phase is you'll see I have a couple different piles of sleepers. I have the two-way zippers separated into one category because those are our favorites. My husband really likes using the two-way zipper sleepers because they're just so simple to change baby, especially in the middle of the night. And then I had another pile for ones that have snaps or more complicated openings just because depending on the situation i think both of us like to be aware of what we're grabbing and it's been a while since we've seen some of this clothing so it's hard to remember what has snaps and what has zips and all of that so i like dividing it that way and then i'm also making categories for some outfits that don't have feet on it as well as separates tops and bottoms we're having a winter baby so most things that the baby is going to be wearing in the newborn phase is going to just be sleepers i don't find it super practical to have a lot of fancy outfits at the newborn phase and i just want to keep them warm i like to avoid baby socks because they can get kicked off or you can lose them and then there might be a little gap between the pants and their ankle and the socks so sleepers work really well and if we do end up traveling and going to California where my parents are in the winter time and it's a little bit warmer then it might be nice to have some of those outfits that don't have feet but other than that in Nebraska in the winter it's mostly going to be just footed sleepers. <music> I am going to film a separate video where I'm organizing the closet or reorganizing the nursery closet as well. So you'll see the types of outfits that I hang up versus the ones that I put into the dresser. But in general, most outfits I'm going to put into the dresser, things that are a little bit nicer, those I end up hanging or sometimes matching sets. I will hang if they're thicker or anything like that, but that's few and far between when it comes to the newborn size. In the newborn section, I had space for just a few socks. I don't have a lot of newborn socks, as I mentioned. And then I also have space for swaddles. I have a few different swaddles. Some are very specific to the newborn age and then others can really last a long time, but I'm gonna put them in the newborn drawer just so I have them. I like putting things in the drawers corresponding with whatever size would be the earliest possible I would use it just so I don't forget what I have. I love these drawer dividers because they're customizable. You'll see how I use them throughout all of the different drawers. And they have these inserts that you can add so you can have separated spaces within each row. Or you can kind of use them as a way to keep your file folding upright as you pull out clothing when you file fold. Typically it should still stay standing if you have a nice tight fold, but sometimes things kind of flop over and if you have the divider in there, you can use that as another way just to keep things upright as you go through and start pulling out clothing and there's less in there to hold things upright. Even though I'm not washing everything, I did dump all of the clothing from the bins that I had in the guest room closet of Owens into the dresser to get it out of the way and get it into the new space. I'm still going to fold and organize. It's probably a little bit of a waste maybe in your mind, but I like to have things neat and organized and that way I can see what I have before I get to that size. So what you saw was I pulled out a lot of clothing that was just stuffed in that drawer. That is the three to six month clothing. 
while the zero to three is still finishing up in the dryer. So I am going to do the exact same thing that I did with the newborn size and start sorting everything into categories, sleepers, separates, all of that, and get to folding. But I'm not gonna bore you with all of the folding of this clothing as well. I'll check back in a second here and you can see that I'm going to put it all away into a separate drawer for three to six months. This category seems like the one where I had the most sleepers. And I think it was because at this phase, we had a baby that was just spitting up a whole lot and I was going through laundry nonstop. So I'm grateful to have this many extra sleepers to go through. And most of them at this point, we had learned that we really appreciated the two-way zippers. There were only three, I think, outfits that were not two-way zippers that were full body suits. And I ended up just putting them with the rest of the two-way zippers. And then I have some onesies and a couple of separate pieces that I also squished in there. And that drawer got full very fast. Oh, the longing of my heart The wish I carry high After three to six, the zero to three month laundry was washed and dried, doing the same process. You can see how I do the same thing over and over again. It is nice to have this type of a process. Sometimes I feel like it maybe wastes a little bit more time. Just having your hands on items multiple times, you would think if you just grab something, you might as well fold it. But I'm telling you, it does speed up the folding process to do the same thing and it also speeds up the organizing process and i am on my way when i'll be coming home There were also some burp cloths and bibs in this load. So I am going to get those folded first because I wanna finish up the top drawer where I had the diapers and the wipes. I wanna also have bibs and burp cloths there, make them a little bit more accessible than they were last time. I had them in the closet and so often Owen would be on the changing pad and need a burp cloth or we'd run in here quickly or I'd be like nursing him and it was just more of a hassle to go into the closet. So I think this will be more accessible and I think I like having these acrylic bins in the dresser for this purpose so I can pull them out. Easier restock and folding of diapers and these bibs and burp cloths. The ones that have kind of the unique shape that I'm folding right now, they were all hand sewn by my mom, or I guess not hand sewn, I should say. They She used a sewing machine, but she made all of these for me. I think she found some template online for burp cloths and we have a lot of them, which is nice because it makes it so I don't have to do laundry as often. And then the rest that I'm going to put the opposite direction, I believe are mostly Burt's Bees brand. And then some few random bibs that are more the drool type bibs that collect like little bits of milk spit up and drool. Actual bibs for eating we keep in the kitchen, but these ones I used every now and then. We didn't really have that big of a drooly baby. I did register for a set of them, so I do have one little set there, and then a few other ones that we've gotten as gifts. And you never know what this baby's gonna be like, if we're gonna need more of them, or we're gonna need more burp cloths or less or something, but this is what we have to start with. Not gonna buy anything else at the outset, and it fits perfectly in there, so that works. When I look deep into your eyes the Sky is beautiful and so are you Back to folding clothing, this process did take a long time 
but I propped my iPad up and was watching TV while I was doing this. So it was kind of an enjoyable experience just being able to sit on the floor, fold some laundry, watch a little bit of TV and hang out. And like I said, reminiscing on all this cute little baby clothing. It's like a laundry. You're on the wrong team. Oh, there's a Also within each category, I don't know if you've noticed, I do try and organize it by color. Probably not necessary. It does look nice in the drawers that way. Every now and then there's a reason that I wanna have a certain color outfit for our baby, but it also just helps knowing what I'm looking for. If I'm trying to find a certain outfit, I know where to look. He doesn't have that many things of clothing, so it's not impossible to find things, but any process you can do to make life a little bit easier in the future might as well. It's like a Though I didn't mind the folding part of the process, my favorite part was the organizing. I loved playing around with these different dividers and figuring out how exactly I wanted it to sit in each drawer and in each size. And it always looked so pretty when I got it all in there. I think these organizers, like I said, do a great job, especially with the added dividers that you can put in there as well. So not only is some of this hand-me-down clothing from Owen, but we also got a fair amount of hand-me-down clothing from my brother and sister-in-law. I don't know if you've been following me for a while and you remember this, but my brother and sister-in-law have twin boys that are just six months older than Owen. So they were born the exact opposite season. They were born in the summer while Owen was born in the winter. Baby number two is going to be born in the winter. So they did give us a fair amount of clothing that their boys were done with. The only problem is because they're born opposite seasons, a lot of the newborn stuff is more summery outfits. And then once it gets more to a six month age, when it's time for my babies to be in short sleeve options, then they had a lot more winter gear. So it doesn't fully work out, but it's nice when we travel to have things of opposite seasons. So it's a fine balancing act here of how accessible I make the clothing that is for the alternative season that's not gonna match up with our baby. And it also depends on the size and the month of the year because sometimes within a size, weather might get a little bit warmer or a little bit colder and there could be an option to wear a short sleeve item or an option to wear something that's a little bit warmer. So I did include most of the clothing even if it wasn't the season that totally matched up with the dates for our new baby. Even after shifting Owen to his new room, I left a lot of the blankets in the nursery here just because 
babies use blankets a lot more than toddlers do. I brought over some blankets that were things that really reminded me of Owen, maybe had his name embroidered on it or had more of a big boy pattern on it and split up the blankets a bit more. But in all honesty, most of them are still in the dresser here. I'm going to add a few more things into the dresser like my boppy nursing pillow covers and some extra sheets and things like that, whether it's sheets for the crib or sheets for the bassinet. And you'll see when I open up the drawer, there are so many blankets and just enough room for those extra items. Last but not least, this bottom drawer, I am not gonna use any organizers in here because this is going to be extra stuff. I'm not gonna go past that three to six month size, but I do have some more sleep sacks as opposed to swaddles. So I wanna have those accessible when our new baby is ready to transition from a swaddle to a sleep sack, just because that can be kind of early on. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is label the drawers. This I did not do last time. I'm thinking we may have a nanny potentially on a temporary basis before there's an opening for daycare. Probably makes it easier for my husband, for Jim to find what he's looking for. My parents are going to come here when the new baby's born and help out for a little bit. I could see our babysitter that we use coming here and not knowing where all of the baby stuff is. So it makes it a little bit easier just for anyone, even myself, to know where things go, where to find things. And these labels peel off so easily that I think even when I transition sizes, which is what I think I'm gonna do when, let's say the baby grows out of newborn clothing, I think I'm gonna shift everything up. These labels you can peel off and just reaffix them wherever you want them. So I don't have to recreate labels every time I move something, I can just shift them around a little bit. So what I did was label each section, each row with what the item is. And I used a slash if there's multiple things in that to indicate the order of what's in that row. And then on the far left-hand side of the drawer, I put the size there as well. So you can tell this is the newborn drawer or this is the zero to three month drawer. And that would probably be the one thing I would forget the most without having to pull something out and look at the tag. That is it for today's video. I am so happy with the way that this turned out. I can't believe how soon baby number two is gonna be here and just how good it feels to start to have things organized, ready and prepped. You never know when a baby is gonna arrive. Hopefully it's closer to 40 weeks, but just in case we are getting super prepped over here. So make sure you stay tuned for other organizing videos. If you're interested in that, if you're interested in more just in general, the mom side of things, maybe more about my pregnancy or how I'm getting ready for postpartum, things like that. I have a separate channel called Sophisticated Motherhood. All of that content will be over here, but until next time, I will see you guys later. Today we're gonna to be doing a kids or toddler closet organization. I am currently pregnant with my second baby and we've decided to move our older son Owen to a different room and keep the nursery as is. If you follow me on Instagram and on YouTube, you know I've gone back and forth and back and forth on this decision and I've chatted with a few of you about this, but I've done some research and I'm hoping to get this transition done as early as possible and get it done months before the baby's arrival so it's not two changes happening at the same time, as well as knowing that our second baby won't move into the nursery for, I don't know, maybe four or five months or so. That's about when we transitioned Owen from our room to the nursery. So with that, it's probably gonna be at least 
seven months, I would think, before baby number two moves into Owen's old room. So I'm hoping he doesn't feel like the baby's replacing him. And again, two changes will be happening at different times. So I'm thinking it won't be too overwhelming for him, but I know it's always difficult with toddlers and little ones going through changes. So I'm trying to get him really excited about his new room. We've been playing in here. He likes to jump in the new crib. And the first step I thought I could get ready was his new closet. So you'll see I'm cutting a lot of tags off of clothing. I have a lot of clothing in larger sizes for him that he's not quite wearing yet. So he is still about 21 months at this point and he has a lot of clothing in the 2T size, as well as some 3T, 4T, even five, maybe 6T. So I still have most of his clothing in his nursery that still fits him right now, things that are more 24 month size in his dresser and a couple of things in the closet there. But here I'm bringing over all the 2T stuff because I'm hoping to transition him in the next few weeks once we finish all of the other projects we have in here. I don't know if you can see on the floor that there were no baseboards because we had a pipe burst here. We just got new carpet. I'm planning on installing some wallpaper, I think. We need to get curtains hung. I need to do a few more things and rearrange the room and all of that before I move him in. So I figured I could move his big boy stuff, meaning his size 2T and larger clothing over to the closet, as well as organizing the shelf with some items that he doesn't use as often. And of course we can easily just come in here and grab stuff if he needs it. The two of us together Cause we got love Cause we got The first step with this shelf that I really like is that it is one of the peg hole shelves, so everything's completely adjustable. I have bins that I'm using from his old nursery that I just had too many bins. I really did not need that many. So I know I won't need them for baby number two and I am going to bring them over here as well as I got some more black bins from Target. These are an incredible container store dupe. I really, really like the Nordic bins from the container store, but they're quite pricey and these ones are so much cheaper and look the same. So I will link those in the description box if you're interested. I have black and gray in here and white because that's kind of the theme and color I'm going with in his room. Hopefully it all turns out and I will definitely share with you the progress of how the rest of the room part looks. That may be over on my other channel, Sophisticated Motherhood. So if you are a mom and like motherhood content and have little ones, make sure you subscribe over there as well. This took a lot of arranging and rearranging because I wanted to think practically of how high up I want certain items as well as how well the bins will fit on different shelves. I want things that are low down to be things that are okay for Owen to grab and things that are high up are a little bit more for me or things that are even way at the top are just items even I'm gonna be rarely accessing because I need a step stool to get to the way top. I love this little shoe shelf that I added. It's actually a monitor stand from Amazon and I can stick his little shoes under the bottom there and those are gonna be the shoes that are too big for him right now and then all the ones that fit are gonna be out in front and it's such an easy little solution to organize and perfect for his tiny baby shoes. I always think it's fun to add a touch of decor in a closet as well. So I'm using one of the shelves to have a small display with a photo. I had this name sign that my mom found a while back when Owen, I think I was still actually pregnant with Owen and it's gonna fit this black and white theme perfectly. And then I am going to also get a bookshelf together. You'll see I'm in Owen's current room and I've already brought in a bunch of baby stuff here and it is a disaster because that was previously in the closet that's now gonna be Owen's room. I've moved it all over and just thrown it in there because I'm gonna do one at a time here. 
and my goal is to pull out all of the older kids books, less of the board books and touch and feel type books. I'll leave all of those in the nursery and then ones that are specific to Owen, like have Owen's name on it. I have a couple of those that I bought for him or were given to us. Those are all gonna go in Owen's room. And I could easily see reading to both of the kids together in one room versus the other. I just don't wanna have all of the books in one of the kids' bedrooms and have, let's say, the baby go down to sleep and it's time to read Owen a book in his room and all of the books are trapped in the nursery or vice versa and the baby's up later and I just wanna read a little book to the baby but there are no books because they're all in Owen's room. I just think it's good to split them up and this made the most sense to me. Plus I had two full shelves of books in Owen's room and that is just a ton. We have lots and lots of books. So we have enough to have one shelf in each room which is plenty. Standing underneath the lights Look into each other's eyes I'm organizing them the same way I did in Owen's old closet, which is in rainbow order. I think it really adds a fun touch of color, especially if you are decorating a kid's room. If you have a bookshelf that's out in the open of a kid's room, that's a really fun way to organize and doesn't make the books look messy. I always used to like organizing them by height. I've never really been a type of person to organize books by genre. Maybe I just haven't had enough books or type or anything like that. So it's kind of fun when you're doing it by color to mix up the height so it has a variance and then it just looks really pretty with the colors. I'm also playing around with the idea of having the books lower down. So this is only on the second shelf, meaning Owen can reach it. Again, I'm saying I'm playing around with this because they've been high up in the past and it would be great for him to be able to access some of his books. The shelf isn't so stuffed that he can't pull them out himself. There's a lot of movement there so he can grab his own books. If for some reason he starts pulling all of them out and it becomes a huge process for me to clean up all of his books all the time because he's just pulling them all off the shelf, I will end up moving them up, but I'm gonna give this a shot and see how it goes. And then the bottom two shelves, I am going to do one for stuffed animals and one for other little toys so he can, again, easily pull those out himself and grab things. Now to organize the black bins that I got from Target. I am pulling out some of the other random things that I have to organize in his closet. I have a pile of memories, meaning things from when he was born, like his little baby hat and other things like that. And then I also like to have a bin for clothing accessories, hats and sunglasses. We bought Owen one of those pairs of earmuffs that he can wear if he goes to a wedding where it's really loud or if he goes to some sort of sporting event or something. So a bin for clothing accessories is great. And as he's now getting older and he's starting school and we usually have like some travel items like portable sound machines or items that we would take just if we're going on a trip, all of those types of things need a home. Standing underneath the lights Look into each other's eyes There's no one left but you and me It's like a made up place that only we can see so I was really struggling to get the labels off the top of the bamboo lids. And there's a couple different types of lids they sell. They also sell plastic ones. And I would assume the labels would peel off of the plastic lids really easily. You'll see the disaster that's on the bamboo lids. I had to get some Goo Gone orange extract or lemon, any sort of citrus extract works great to remove sticky residue. And I grabbed a razor blade too, because I'm also taking off some of the vinyl labels that I made on bin clips from the container store. These I can put on the Target bins, the gray ones and the black ones. And those vinyl labels, I like to say they're semi-permanent. They do really well holding up to even the dishwasher if you put them on things that you're gonna put in the dishwasher, but you can also peel them up. You could peel them up just with your finger, but I painted my nails and didn't wanna ruin my nail polish. So I was using the razor blade there and then getting rid of any sticky residue that might've been left over. People say that the path you are choosing
After that, it was time to make some new labels, so I pulled out my Cricut. I quickly typed up a few different things and found a fun font that seemed kid appropriate. And I'm gonna do black ones and white ones depending on the color of the bin and depending on the color of the bin clip. I had almost enough bin clips in my back stock of organizing supplies, but not quite. I was short on two bin clips, so I'm still gonna make the labels, and then I'm gonna need to go out and purchase two more clips, and then I'll just apply them once I get the clips. It's like you don't know. If you're ever interested in vinyl labels, they are always available on my website for purchase, or I do have a couple of YouTube videos on how to use a Cricut if you're thinking about purchasing a Cricut machine for yourself, whether it's this larger one that I have or the smaller Cricut Joy, which is much more affordable. I have videos on both of those to show you how I use them and some tips and tricks. Or if you don't wanna go through all of that and learn how to use them or spend the money buying a machine, you can always head to my website and order labels for your next organizing project. I've decided to make labels that are as broad as possible, which is something I always recommend if you are gonna be adding labels to any space that you organize because things move around, especially in a kid's room as they grow and develop. Having a young toddler, I know the phases that he's gonna go through are gonna change so quickly. So instead of having a label that says, diapers, I'm gonna have a label that says extras. Extras of what could be completely different depending on the stage that your child is in. So when I had a newborn, extras could have meant extra diaper cream or extra wipes. And then with an older kid, who knows, it could mean extra sheets or something like that. So keep the labels broad and that way it'll grow with your kid. Last but not least, I have a few more size 2T things I'm gonna put in his dresser. This is a hand-me-down dresser we got from my husband's brother, my brother-in-law, and it works just fine because it's black and will fit in the theme. Actually, because we got this dresser for free, it's part of the reason I came up with this theme for the room. And I've started putting some of his larger sizes in here, just like I did in the closet. And I'm just kind of thinking through how I wanna do it. I think at the top, I'm gonna do things like socks and pajamas. What else? Maybe extra sleep sacks or extra crib sheets can go up there. And then the next two drawers down, I'm going to do one side for warm weather clothing and one side for cold weather clothing. And then on the bottom left, I am going to have all of his larger sizes, anything above a size 2T. And then on the bottom right, I think I'm mostly going to put blankets down there. Feels like things are gonna go my way. I'm going to let the sun shine in the These expandable drawer organizers work really well because they customize to your space so you can pull them in and out depending on how large your drawers are. And for these drawers, they actually pull all the way out and fit great. They are really nice for little kids clothing because some of those slots on the sides are nice and small and perfect to fold up his clothing. But I think they'll also grow with him and the square slots in the middle are a little bit larger too for larger clothing or once he gets to bigger sizes. Shine in the day. 
that is it for today's video. In just a second, I am going to show you the full after of the closet. Thank you for joining me. I also want to mention I will be reorganizing the nursery closet, so stay tuned for that video. There's going to be a lot more content putting these two rooms together and just other prep videos. I need to reorganize the kids' bathroom now that there's going to be two kids and just a whole lot of other stuff. Maybe some freezer meal prep coming up as I get further along in pregnancy. But again, don't forget to subscribe to my other channel, Sophisticated Motherhood, for a lot of that content over there as well. First up, we're going to be making some bacon gruyere egg bites. These are going to be really similar to the Starbucks egg bites, but you don't need a sous vide to make them. I'm going to show you how to make them in the oven and I've pulled out all of my ingredients here. I am gonna start by cracking all of the eggs into a bowl and I'm linking all of the recipes in the description box below if you are interested in grabbing the recipe and prefer to print it off yourself. So for this one, just because of the amount of cheese that I had, I decided to do one and a half of the recipes. And if you are making freezer meals, it is nice a lot of times to double it, make two of something. So even if you're making a casserole, you can make two casseroles. Just put in the effort at one time and save yourself a little bit more in the future. So there are going to be 12 eggs here. Just drop to show. And then I'm also gonna add in a cup and a half of sour cream and get that all mixed together. That is all combined. I am going to add in two teaspoons of salt as well as half a teaspoon of pepper. And then I pre-shredded my Gruyere cheese. You might be able to find it in the grocery store already shredded, but you will need shredded Gruyere cheese. And I'm gonna add half of the amount that I have here. And I have 12 ounces, so I'm gonna add in six of the ounces there. And then I need to chop my bacon as well because I'm gonna add in the bacon. Okay, so at this point I have it all together and I should have mentioned that that was a full package of bacon that I did. I'm gonna add some silicone liners to my muffin tin. It does say in the recipe that ideally you would just have a silicone muffin tray or a silicone baking sheet of some sort that you could use. I don't have that so we're improvising with silicone. You could also just use your regular muffin tin and you could spray it down and spray it down pretty well because eggs do tend to stick. I'm not going to spray it because I use the silicone but I am adding in a bath of hot water here. Let's see I'm gonna try and add even more. It should get up a good way on the muffin tin, so I'm gonna add a little bit more and then start filling the egg cups up and add a little bit of cheese on top. And you are going to stick it in the oven for about 30 minutes or so. And the oven has been preheated already to 350. So I'm gonna get all that stuff done, pop it in the oven. Ain't easy. I know you can't talk to me, but I hope you realize you're playing with fire. You were my one and only until you left me lonely. I guess you stopped to care. I've got the egg cups cooled, and I did do a second half batch because remember, I did one and a half. 
of the recipe and I just put it straight in the muffin tin without any silicone cups. And I will say it was a lot harder to get them out. So if you have silicone, definitely go for that. So I am going to just label a freezer bag here. I'm adding the date, which is always very important. I'm telling you when you do freezer meals, even if it's clear and see-through, you're gonna wanna write exactly what things are. There can be freezer burn, or if you wait a while and something gets stuck at the back of your freezer, you might forget what it is. So label, label, label with what it is. If there are further cooking instructions, which I'll have examples of some recipes with further cooking instructions a little bit later, you wanna add that in. And of course the date, most freezer meals, I would say are good for about three months in the freezer. But a lot of the recipes that I have will recommend different things because most of these I found are specific freezer friendly recipes. I believe some of them say two months or so, but just keep in mind, the longer you have it in the freezer, the less fresh it's gonna be and the higher chance that you're gonna have some freezer burn to deal with. That's it, they are all done. I'm gonna stick them in the freezer. And I guess I should mention that you can reheat these at 50% power for like three to five minutes. You could just do full power if you prefer at a minute or so, and just figure out what works best for you in your microwave to reheat them. But I would for sure stick them in the microwave to reheat. We're doing a little bit more of an indulgent breakfast and I'm making a French toast casserole. So I have a loaf of brioche bread and I'm gonna try and get out here. But the recipe I'm using says you can also do challah or French bread if you have that as well. Okay, now we got that out and I'm gonna cut it into one inch pieces and we need to grease up our little foil pan here and then I am going to spread that around. Now that we have all of that in there, I am going to start getting the egg mixture going. So we have eight eggs that I'm cracking into a bowl here. And then I am going to add in half a cup of cream, two cups of milk, a tablespoon of vanilla extract, and three fourths of a cup of sugar. Whisk it all together and then pour it on top of my bread that I have in my pan here. Next step is to make the crumble that's gonna go on top. So for that, it is a half cup of flour, as well as a half cup of brown sugar, which is pretty much about all I have left of this brown sugar here. And then I am also going to add in a quarter teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of cinnamon. And what I'm gonna do, oh, one more thing. I'm adding in um, half a cup of butter that I am going to cut into small pieces. So what I'm going to do is put it into a small Ziploc bag. You don't wanna sprinkle it on top before you freeze it. And you can do this two ways. You can freeze 
after you've finished baking. And that's kind of the theme of a lot of these types of freezer meals and recipes is sometimes you can freeze them before you've baked them or before you've cooked them. And other times it's better to freeze it after or maybe just more convenient for you to freeze it after and simply do a reheat. Totally up to you. But I am going to freeze this before it's been baked. And so I want to have the topping separated just as I would if I was going to do the recipe normally. Toss in my butter here. And you are going to saran wrap the whole foil container. Then I'm gonna place my Ziploc there and then I am going to put the foil on top of it. And that's what I'm gonna label with the cooking instructions, which is to bake at 350 for 45 to 50 minutes. Again, it's one of those dishes that you're gonna to wanna to take out of the freezer and let thaw overnight in the refrigerator. And this is gonna be so delicious, especially because I'm having a baby in the winter time, kind of near Christmas, depending on what's going on and when the baby shows up, maybe we could have this for a cozy family morning in when we wanna have a little bit more of an indulgent breakfast and just hang out in our PJs all morning, which I feel like happens a lot when you're postpartum. So I am going to finish this up and get it all wrapped up and write those instructions. I'm so excited for this recipe. It is extremely easy and apparently it's a viral pasta bake that I had never heard of before. Even though it's a very easy recipe, I still am hoping that it will be great to do right now and save me the time of meal planning, going to get the groceries, doing dishes even, because I'm gonna be putting it in a foil baking dish. So even if you have easy meals, prepping them as freezer meals in advance will probably save you time. So I'm going to chop up a white onion and brown that with a pound of ground beef while I have a pot of water boiling. And then I'll show you the next steps, but I'm telling you this one is so beyond easy. There basically isn't even a recipe for it. So I have you all set up on the cooktop here. I'm adding in the ground beef, but I just wanted to mention that veggie chopper is something new that I just got. I have no idea how I went so long without having this. I mean, that was so beyond simple. And especially with onions, I really, really like having it because I don't have to sit there chopping onions and having my eyes water. So if you don't have one of these, I will also link that in the description box below if you're interested. It does go on sale often and I was able to get it on sale. So maybe keep an eye out. There's a few different versions. And then I'm going to use this fun dandy tool to break apart my ground beef and really move it around and get that all browned. We're running out of light. The time is changing day to night. Okay, so I got the meat all browned up and I just drained out some of the grease there. Then I'm gonna add in a jar of marinara sauce, mix that up, let it simmer, and it sounds like my water is boiling. So I am going to add in one pound of pasta and let that cook in my boiling water. The pasta is done cooking, so I am going to take it off the stovetop here and drain it out. I have this fancy little thing that has a strainer built into it. And then I am going to add in a jar of Alfredo sauce. You could homemade Alfredo sauce if you want. But we have a lot of meals to cook today, so I'm not necessarily interested in that right now. But I have my pasta drained, so I'm gonna add it back into the bowl there, and then we will add in the Alfredo sauce. I 
let the pasta cool for just a while. You probably saw that I added in the Alfredo sauce to the pasta. That's the first layer that you throw in. Then on top of that, you're going to put your meat and pasta sauce mixture, but do not combine the two of them. You're supposed to keep them separated. And then I'm gonna top it with some mozzarella cheese now that it's cooled off and put foil on top, write the instructions. And the instructions are to thaw overnight in the refrigerator, bake at 350 degrees for 45 minutes, broil a little bit if you want at the end. That will help make the cheese nice and crisp and bubbly. And that's it. So I'm gonna finish it off. And you keep asking why I'm out of control My body and my soul don't want to be whole For you I'm just unknown And you're not that someone who will find my heart Next up I'm going to be making a green chili chicken enchilada casserole almost So I'm going to be using my veggie chopper again here and one of the things that I'm gonna do for this one is double the recipe because I went ahead and already made some shredded chicken. You could use rotisserie chicken for this or you could make your own shredded chicken. And I just made a lot of it. So we are gonna double it. And if I don't have enough of this green chili enchilada sauce, which is what the recipe calls for, I also have some red. So we'll see what happens. I might make one red and one green. I have a larger pan back there. It's more like a pot that is heating up with a little bit of olive oil that I'm gonna add my two onions to, as well as my bell peppers. You should have four if you're doubling it, but I only have three. So I'm hoping that it still turns out okay with only three. happening and I don't want to miss a thing letting go is not a sin okay. okay so that is all softened I am adding in my shredded chicken you should have like three heaping cups if you are going to double it and then I'm gonna add in some spices I'm doing a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of cumin, a teaspoon of pepper, two teaspoons of chili powder, and a teaspoon and a half of garlic powder. I'm gonna mix that up and then we will set that aside. And there's going to be a Greek yogurt mixture that we're gonna add in here in just a second. That's what we will do next. Chicken mixture is all done, so we are going to make the yogurt mixture that I talked about, which I'm just still gonna list all of the doubling of the recipe. It's going to be two cups of cheese. I just have Cheddar Jack here, but you could do regular cheddar, you could do Monterey Jack, you could do Pepper Jack if you wanted it spicy. I don't think it really needs to be super specific. And then I am going to add in two teaspoons of salt, followed by four cans of diced green chilies. And then I'm gonna add in three cups of Greek yogurt. And you do wanna try and let your chicken mixture cool just a little bit before you add this Greek yogurt mixture into it, just so the Greek yogurt doesn't start to curdle. But once I get this done, I am going to combine those, mix it up, and we'll check back for the tortilla rolling portion. Now we're onto the rolling portion, so I am just going to Take my tortillas one at a time here. They are eight inch tortillas. And I am gonna add, the recipe says you should get about a half a cup. So I grabbed a half a cup measuring cup. <laughs> and I'm gonna add that to my tortillas and roll them up and put them into my foil baking dish here. 
and get a little bit of an assembly line going, especially since I'm doubling this. I feel like this is gonna take just a little moment. So we will go one by one, lay them seam side down so they stay closed during the baking process. And then we're gonna bake them in the oven with foil on top for 30 minutes at 350 degrees. So don't wanna be For you I'm just unknown And you're not that someone who will find my heart and bring peace to my mind to move on Oh cause I will find the way on my own Oh I don't That ended up being a lot of filling. I still have leftover filling and I filled up my two trays already. So I honestly might have this for dinner tonight and just not use tortillas and just have that. So I am going to add, it says a cup and a half to two cups per casserole here of the enchilada sauce. And you're just gonna pour it over top. It calls for green again, but I only have enough green for one of them. And then the other one, I'm gonna do red enchilada sauce. That looks pretty good. Get everything all covered. And then I'm gonna add my foil on top and again, bake for 30 minutes at 350. I'm just grabbing them both out of the oven. It's been 30 minutes. And the last step is going to be topping them with about a cup more cheese on top. And then we're gonna bake them uncovered for five minutes. And then after that, you're just gonna let them cool and we will put the foil back on top so we can get them ready for the freezer. You keep saying fine, but I'm not in line. No, no, not this time. Cause I will find the way on my own. Okay, so I have the foil that I used from before. I'm gonna put that back on the tops of these and put my baking instructions on them. I am going to write that I'm going to cook them straight from frozen. Two options with this as well. You can thaw them overnight, but I am gonna write the instructions for baking straight from frozen, which is 350 degrees for 45 minutes in the oven with the foil on top. So I'm gonna specify that. The only thing about this one is the fact that you are supposed to sprinkle some toppings on, fresh toppings, that would be really good, but also that means I probably have to go to the grocery store postpartum. So I'm gonna write some of the potential toppings that you can add on, like diced avocado, red onion, cilantro would be great. You could also add fresh tomatoes or a little dollop of sour cream or something like that if you wanted, or Greek yogurt. So I'm going to put these on and label them and get them in the freezer. For this next meal, we're making an Olive Garden inspired pasta soup. I have my water boiling for the pasta and then I am just cutting some more ground beef here. So I'm gonna add that to my large pot, get that browned with some salt and pepper. Okay, so the beef is all browned. I am going to grab it off the stove top here and transfer it to a plate. Then I just added a couple tablespoons of oil. I'm adding in two stalks of chopped celery, two cups of shredded carrots. I'm gonna stir that for just a moment. And then I'm going to add in four cloves of minced garlic, followed by one tablespoon of tomato paste after that garlic has also had a minute to cook. So we do our carrots and celery for a little bit, then add in the garlic, let that cook for just a second, and then add in the tomato paste, and we will do more in just a minute. All of that is combined and cooked now, so I'm going to start adding the bulk of the ingredients. We're gonna add our beef back into the pot here. 
And then there's quite a few canned things that we're adding in. So I'm going to add in, I have a can of kidney beans, a can of cannellini beans. I also have a 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. I should have a can of diced tomatoes, but I have these diced tomatoes and green chilies. That's all I have right now. So we're adding that in and it should again be 15 ounces, but mine's only 10. I am going to add in a couple of teaspoons of Italian seasoning, just eyeballing it. Three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, also eyeballing that. And then I'm going to add in two cups of chicken broth as well as two cups of water. Give that all a really nice stir and then let it simmer for about 15 minutes. Pasta is drained and the soup has now simmered for 15 minutes. So I'm going to add the pasta into the soup and mix it all together. And then to store soup, my favorite thing to use is kind of a no-brainer super cubes i've shared these before for freezer meals and if you watch my other postpartum freezer meal video from last time i was pregnant i use them for a lot of other meals some meals where i put like a layer of rice at the bottom and then did a buttered chicken on top and you can make individually portioned things you can make individually portioned lasagnas that would be really great i've done that before but soup is in the name, so super cubes are great for freezing soup, and that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use, I think this is the two cup tray, yeah, the two cup tray, the larger one, and scoop my soup into there, let it cool before I put it into the freezer. You can leave them in here in the freezer, or you can take them out and put them into a gallon Ziploc. A gallon Ziploc will fit four of these just perfectly, and this recipe is done. You only call me on the weekends when you're out and about. Only chasing highs, you need me. He brings me flowers on a Tuesday. He gives me good love and something that I never Last but not least, we're going to make a sweet treat dessert, and this is going to be a freezer friendly dessert. This is something I've made before, and Jim thought it was one of the best things I've ever made dessert wise, and it's not too difficult to make. I'm adding in two cans of coconut milk. I am going to double this recipe. And it's like an ice cream Snickers bar, but a vegan version. You can make it vegan. Depends on what ingredients you add. It does have an option to add protein powder, which I'm not going to do today. After you've added in your two cans of coconut milk, then I'm going to add in three quarters of a teaspoon of cashew butter. One, two, three. And at this point you can add in half a cup of protein powder if you want to. If you don't add in half a cup of protein powder, you should add a little bit extra nut butter. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'm going to add in half a cup of maple syrup here. And then I just did a pinch of salt and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. I am going to go blend this up and I will be right back. After that, you can use some candy molds, silicone molds, ice cube trays, whatever you have on hand. My absolute favorite are super cubes and their two tablespoon size is perfect for this recipe. It's what I've used in the past, but I only have one clean right now. So I've grabbed a few other things. The reason I like this is because it's so sturdy. So when I hold it from one end, you'll see it doesn't flop over. Whereas when I hold this, it falls over. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to transport to the freezer, which actually makes me think maybe I should grab a cookie sheet to put this on so it doesn't fall all over the place. There, that will make it easier. So I'm going to just start by filling these up and then we are going to freeze them in the freezer for an hour or two or until they start to feel so I've taken the ice cream out of the freezer now. It is firm enough and we're going to make the caramel layer. I just heated up two tablespoons of coconut oil in the microwave. 
got that all melted. Then into this bowl, I'm gonna add half a cup of maple syrup, as well as a cup of peanut butter and about a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then mix it up and we're going to do just a thin layer on top of all of those little ice cream bars that we have created. Then you're gonna stick it back in the freezer for I would say 30 minutes, an hour maybe even. Let it firm up as much as you have time for, as much as you can. And then we are going to get a chocolate shell going and we're gonna dip the whole thing in chocolate or just dip a little bit in chocolate after it is nice and firm and frozen. Now everything's had a nice amount of time to freeze. I can pop it out of my little trays here. I'm going to cover it in some chocolate and sprinkle with coarse sea salt and pop it back into the freezer to let it finish freezing. Got some new hangers for baby number two and was gonna go through all of Owen's old clothing, which I also filmed in a motherhood video and couldn't hang up the rest of it just because I ran out of hangers. So the rest of the hangers arrived and I had some time to hang them up and was gonna get those out of the guest room and off of the floor of the guest room and put away. So I am going to just chill and I was actually watching some Netflix while I did this and get everything all hung up. It's so crazy going through all of Owen's old clothing because it was a while ago, but not that long ago, just because he's only like one and a half right now, but it's still so nostalgic seeing all those outfits that he used to wear all the time and hanging them up for another baby who will be here this winter. It's just so crazy and I'm so excited and also feels kind of nice that I'm able to get a lot of this stuff done early and not stress as much this time because we have everything. I was thinking about making like a second baby registry and there just isn't that much stuff we need because we're having boys basically exactly two years apart and they're the same gender and we kept all of his stuff because we were hoping to have more kids so like I said there's just not that much that we need In my previous Sophisticated Saturday video, you saw that I brought my crib, the extra crib that we have out of storage and was carrying it upstairs. We were going to get this room, which used to be Jim's office, recarpeted. So the room is now carpeted and I'm in love with the carpet. It's so nice to have fresh new carpet. And we had to recarpet this room because there was water damage over Christmas of last year. So the insurance company actually even cut out a square of the old carpet so not only did it have water damage but it was like missing a part of it you'll see we still have baseboards ripped up on one side now that i've recarpeted this one room it makes me want to recarpet all of the bedrooms like i said it's just so fresh and clean feeling we did go with a very light color so hopefully it works out and lasts but anyway because the carpet was done, we were able to put that chair that we got in there and bring the crib into the room. And 
I'm still only in my second trimester, but I'm just thinking like I have so much energy right now and I'm really excited to put this room together. I might as well take advantage of the energy while I have it. And there's kind of no point in waiting because we've already moved Jim's desk out. He wasn't even using this room. And I think I've decided that we're going to transition Owen into this room and keep the other room, just the nursery, and move the new baby into there. So I have been doing some research on moving kids when you're expecting a new baby, moving them to a new room, and everything says that if you're going to do that, try and transition them early so they don't feel like the new baby is kicking them out. So hopefully we can get this transition done before baby number two arrives. And I'm also thinking that baby number two isn't even gonna be in Owen's old nursery right away. He'll be sleeping in our room. So that should make it feel like he's not kicking him out of his room either. But if you have kids and you've potentially moved a child or something and have some advice, let me know, I would love to hear it. If you didn't watch my other Sophisticated Saturday video, I mentioned that this crib was a hand-me-down from one of my cousins. They were done having kids and knew that we wanted to have more kids. And if we had kids that were close together in age, they didn't want us to feel like we had to rush one child out of a crib and push them into like a toddler bed or a big boy bed. So they offered us this crib to hold on to just in case and that just in case is now happening. Both kids are gonna be in a crib at the same time just because Owen's not ready yet to transition and I'm gonna wait till he's ready. So since it was in storage, I thought I would get to building it and it was actually not terrible to build. All of the issues with building it, I think were my mistake. The instructions were so simple and you'll see I'm referring to the instructions a lot, but they were truly very simple and my cousins were awesome. You can tell there's little Ziploc bags and they were all labeled with what each screw goes to and what part it was for. So they cut out some of my work for me. Also, the hardest part of putting the entire crib together was putting the mattress part, I don't even know what that's called, the little netting thing here that holds the mattress. That part was the most difficult because I couldn't figure out how I should do it with my belly in the way. I can't really reach over and reach down and adjust things. And I was thinking like, should I tip it on its side? And I just couldn't get it even. I also got confused and first thought I was gonna use this as the new baby's room and was putting the crib at the highest level and then realized if this is gonna be Owen's room, the crib should be at the lowest level. Just like a whole internal back and forth. And I don't know why I feel like I overcomplicated this part. The beginning part I easily feel like it was totally fine for me to build alone. This part, there were a couple of moments where I was thinking maybe I should wait for Jim to get home and have him help me out. Finally, I got it figured out and decided to grab the mattress and let that expand because it was all stuck in a little box there. My mom actually got us this mattress. She was kind enough to get it and send it to us. So I thought it should just take a little time to expand because it's all packed up in there. And I was very, very careful as I was cutting it open because I did not want the scissors to cut the mattress. So I started with the scissors and then ended up mostly just kind of pulling apart that plastic. The last step was just putting in a few extra screws that go in the holes that you're not using. I was missing one screw at the end of this though, so I'm a little bit confused where that screw went or maybe it was missing a screw when they gave it to us, I have no idea. But I'm thinking as I move furniture around then I'll just become totally sure that there was or was not an extra screw. 
and that's something I still have to play around with where I want the crib to go. I think it either has kind of two walls, the one big wall that is open right on the side with the door and the closet, or the other wall that has the two little windows. I think the crib looks so cute under there, but the only difficult part or the thing that I think is really difficult about nurseries is having a rocking chair or something or a glider that I feel like looks best in a corner. And if it's one that reclines, you kind of need it to be in a corner so it has space, but there's only one corner in this room without a door, which makes it very difficult. And we don't have the dresser up here yet. So I am going to really play around with it once I get the dresser in here and not stress too much. The dresser is another thing that we have as a hand-me-down. Jim's brother just moved apartments and didn't need his dresser anymore. And we needed another dresser for baby number two. So we gladly took him up on taking that dresser. It maybe wasn't like the color and style that I wanted, but I think I am going to make it work and actually have an idea for the new bedroom theme that will work great with the color of the dresser. We just need somebody to help us carry it up the stairs because no way am I doing that. So one of the other packages that we got, we ordered in July and that is the Baby Brezza. It's their new bottle washer, dryer, and sterilizer all in one. It's a new product. It was quite expensive, but one of the things I hated most about the early phase of having a baby is washing all of the bottles and pump parts. We had a nanny who Monday through Thursday would help out with a lot of the washing of the bottles, but I was still mostly doing my pump parts. On the weekends and Fridays, I was doing everything, and it just felt like this never-ending cycle. I didn't like putting them in the dishwasher with the rest of the food. I wanted to keep things separated and the laundry room ended up being kind of bottle HQ. We had a mini fridge where I stored all of my breast milk up here. All of the bottles are up here just because that's where the kids' rooms are. That's where our bedroom is. And it was really convenient that way. And I'm hoping to do the same thing. So this product seems very exciting. I think if you order now, it's potentially coming in late November, but they keep pushing out the date depending on when you order. So again, I ordered in July, the second it launched and we didn't get it till October. I'm just reading all of the instructions and trying to get it put together. I already noticed as I organized my bottles and pump parts for baby number two, which I have a separate video for on my other channel, Sophisticated Motherhood, that some of them probably weren't washed completely, that some of them weren't washed as well as they should have been maybe before I stored them. I don't really know what the deal was. One kind of turned yellow, so I'm gonna try and give that one a wash, but if it doesn't work, I am going to toss it. One of the things I hear people recommending is to get new bottle nipples for a second or third or a future baby and not to reuse them. So I'm gonna see how these do in the bottle washer here. And I will say some of the sticky residue and stuff that I felt like was still on the bottles and the nipples really came off. I don't wanna jinx it, but I foresee this being a very, very valuable tool. I'm just hoping it doesn't end up being even more expensive because the downside of it is you have to use their tablets. Every time you wanna run a cycle and wash it, you can't use any other sort of washing detergent or dishwasher tablets or dish soap. So they kind of hold you captive there that you have to keep going back and buying more of the tablets. So fingers crossed this ends up being a good purchase. And we won't ever get enough. They don't know. They don't know. In your eyes I put my trust. Baby, you're my all-time favorite drug. After the labels, I moved to the bump book. It has pages for every two weeks of pregnancy. So every week I've been taking a bump photo of myself holding a sign with how many weeks I am. So I like to put those two photos on the opposite page of where it asks me all of these different prompts, like what my symptoms are, notable things that have happened, pregnancy milestones, one of them's mommy's thoughts. And then after each section, it also has blank pages for more photos, spots for first trimester, second trimester, third trimester recaps, all of that stuff. 
And I've said this before, but with a second baby, it is so much harder to keep up with. I also did a baby book for Owen and I'm planning on doing a baby book for baby number two, which takes them all the way to their first year. And then I also have a toddler book, which I think takes them till age five. And then I have a school year book. They are all matching sets and the school year takes them till they graduate high school. And I just think it'll be the sweetest thing to give them these little sets of all of the books from when I got pregnant with them all the way to them graduating high school. Hopefully they appreciate it. I know that I'm having a lot of fun and though Owen was only born almost two years ago, I still look back at his and feel like they're fond memories and look back at his for reference too with this pregnancy thinking, did that happen with Owen or how many weeks pregnant was I when that happened? So they're beneficial for a few different reasons. And we also have some play mats that I wash, things for the new baby. So I'm gonna take those off the guest room bed, bring them into the nursery and get those all set up. It kind of took me a moment to remember how to do this. I used to wash them all the time from baby spit up and all of that stuff, but it's been a while since I've had to configure these play mats, so it did take a moment. And this is some of the last remaining baby prep I have to do. If you've been following me on Instagram, either on Sophisticated Organization or Sophisticated Motherhood, I've been sharing these videos like a day in the life at 30 whatever weeks pregnant and sharing some of the things that I've been doing to prep to get ready. And a little while ago, we pulled out all of the baby toys and all of the baby gear and all of that stuff. I just wanted to give it a wash first before I set it up because it had been sitting in storage for quite some time. And then I also finished a load washing a new crib mattress protector. We needed a second one because we have two kids in cribs now. We're going to have two kids in cribs now. And this was kind of one of the last few baby items that I really needed. So I am putting that on the crib and then I'm gonna put the crib sheet on. We won't have our baby sleep in this room for a while, but I also do have a newborn photo shoot planned in January here. So I don't know if she's gonna take photos in this room in the nursery or where we're gonna take photos. So I kinda wanna get the room together a little bit just in case. And then when it's time to transition him over to this room, it'll be ready as well. Then I had a bookshelf in this room, floating bookshelves that I also need to put a little bit of decor on, again, in case we are taking photos in here. So I had a few cute decorative things in his closet that don't need to be there, and I'm just gonna pull them out of his closet and put them onto the shelf to help make it look like there's a little bit more going on because they are pretty much completely blank right now. And I'm just going through pacifiers to fill up this glass jar decorated with pacifiers. I grabbed a few cute books, went digging through the nightstand to see what else was in there that might work. And then I popped into Owen's room to grab a stuffed animal and other little trinkets to help fill the shelves. When I was in Owen's room, I noticed that he had books galore. I decided in his room to bring the bookshelf down lower so he can access it. So he goes and grabs his own books, which means that there's constantly books all over the place. He always wants to read more books at night. And then when we finish reading them at night, we turn off the light and go to bed. We don't put them away because we're just sitting in the chair and they have piled up for quite a while. So I put those away. And then my last sophisticated Saturday, I also shared a little bit of working on my bump 
book, my pregnancy journal. This time I am working on filling out my toddler book. Owen had his second birthday and I haven't finished filling out all of the information about him being two. So I added photos from his birthday party, all of the details. This toddler book has a fun spot where you can add quotable moments. And so I'm gonna go through and add all of the funny little things he's saying because this is the cutest age and they say such funny things. So I'm gonna add in stuff like that. There's a page for him to doodle. I'm gonna let him color and give him some markers so he can look back on his doodles every year. He also had his two-year checkup. So I am grabbing from my file cabinet the paper that we got from it, which gives us all of his measurements and adding that stuff in there. And then you'll see I am adding the details for his little blue truck birthday party, which is his favorite book series. I'm gonna lock my door and stay inside a way until I'm safe again. I have nothing more to put on. I'm defeated and withdrawn. Just trying to understand where it went wrong. Okay, after I finished up in my office with my journals, I am going into our mudroom. This is where I have all of our stuff ready to go to the hospital. One bag for me, one bag for Owen. And I just needed to do a little bit of final shuffling and rearranging. I wanted to add a couple more outfits for Owen. I think my in-laws may end up taking him a day early, or I just wanna make sure he has enough clothing and they don't have to do a bunch of laundry for him. And I also wanted to change my going home outfit. So I grabbed a sweatshirt, which as I was starting to pack it up here, I realized that it had some oil stains on it. So I'm gonna try and actually get those out. I got a new blanket that I wanted to use for baby. So I'm going to fold that up and replace it with the other blanket I had in my hospital bag. And then the last point of going through my hospital stuff was because I wanted to get the colors for the two outfits that I packed to take photos for him because I was starting to feel kind of sad that I didn't have a cute little name sign for the new baby and I did for Owen. So I wanted to make some name signs myself that will match the outfits. I grabbed a hat and a little booty from the two outfits. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, you might not know that baby boy is already here. So if you keep watching, I'm gonna share the name of our baby. I've already shared on Instagram. I just filmed some videos in advance so I could take the first couple of weeks off with our baby and not have to worry about YouTube videos and all of that. So baby boy is here. And if you want any updates, please make sure you are following me on Instagram as I will share all the details over there, probably first before I start making new YouTube videos. That being said, if you do have any questions, I am planning on next filming a Q&A. That's gonna be one of the first videos after giving birth that I'm gonna film. So if you have any questions, whether it's organizing related, especially since we're doing the sophisticated declutter right now, if you have questions about the sophisticated declutter, if you have baby questions, you can ask those as well. I will also likely be filming a full birth story on my sophisticated motherhood channel and talking more about the mom stuff over there. But any random questions you have, just let me know in the comments below. It's for the Q and A video and I will do my best to address it during that video. Two colors, a blue and a green, and then I printed out his name to put on these acrylic circles. I bought these circles because I used them as milestones 
for each week of pregnancy, I took a little photo and I happened to have two left over. So it worked out perfectly that I'm going to make these two. And if you can see now, our baby boy's name is Henry. His middle name is Harold. That is my husband's grandpa's name. Owen's middle name is after my grandpa. So it was Jim's grandpa's turn. And I kind of think the HH is cute. I have a couple other Henrys in my family and thought I would never use the name Henry, but really love it so much. I think it kind of goes well with Owen. Hopefully you like the name too, but we're really excited to have our little baby boy Henry and have Owen be a big brother. And these name signs turned out perfect. I just made two of them because I'm not sure, honestly, which one I'm going to put him in to take photos of. And since I was making one, it really didn't take that much effort to make two. a chair that my mom sent me. She had some duplicate baby items because my brother, if you followed me for a while, you probably remember, he has twin boys who are just six months older than Owen. So even my parents bought two of a few different types of baby items and these little rocking swing things vibrate and are so nice and Owen did really like it. So she sent it to us because once the twins were older, they didn't need it anymore and she didn't need to have two of them. And by the time we got it to our house, Owen was too big for it. So I never fully put it together. She sent me the instructions on how to build it. And I'm just double checking, but I think I built it correctly. But for the life of me, I cannot figure out how to put this cover on. I am reading the instructions, cannot figure it out. And I'm gonna be honest, this is a complete fail. I just decided to give up. I also noticed that it looked like the cover had a little bit of discoloration. So works out for the best. I am going to stick it in the wash and try and get that stain out. And my mom is going to come out here anyway when I give birth. So I might ask for her help or Jim's help because this is something I cannot do on my own. Maybe you will get there. Hey everyone, my name is Sophie from Sophisticated Organization. Welcome to a kid's bathroom linen closet organization. This is the before shot. I did organize this bathroom once before when I was pregnant with our first with Owen. That was about two years ago and we really didn't have that much stuff. Now we've acquired a lot more are expecting our second baby boy very soon here. So I thought this would be a good time to do a refresh and actually organize all of the things that we have acquired. So you can tell I started by pulling things out. I'm sitting in the nursery just so there's a little bit more space and I'm going to go through, sort everything into categories and then figure out what bins and organizers work best. I did have a few organizers already and bought a few more. I bought more probably than I need, so I'm going to test it out and see what things look like. And I did play around with a few different arrangements before I started filming to make sure I had the right products. And I, of course, always measure my space first and then go purchase based on the measurements. Black Friday wasn't that long ago and I love Tubby Todd products. They are our favorite for baby shampoo, body wash, they have bubble bath, lotions, and then they also have some ointments. We even use their sunscreen, all of that stuff. So I have a lot of those products, a lot of backup shower products, and those I'm going to put in their own bin together.
Next up, I have the Otteroos. We really like those for the newborn phase. It is a device you can put around your newborn's neck and let them float in the bathtub. We have a bin, of course, for swim diapers. I have some backstock swim diapers too because I bought them when they were on sale. And then I bought two different types of Divided Lazy Susan. So I'm gonna play around with which one works best. One is from iDesign, one is from Target, and I'm gonna link everything I can in the description box below, all of the different organizing products and some of the actual baby, toddler, kid products and bathroom supplies that we have that are our favorites. When you're lost and no one's there I debated back and forth here, but I think I like the Target organizers better. I like how there's some large spaces, some small spaces, so you can have a variance of items in there. If you have some items that are a little bit longer, it also has those long spaces, so that works out really well. And I believe the Target one is less expensive. Now that I have a general idea of how much stuff I have and what types of things it fits in best, I am doing more arranging inside of the actual closet here. I found this organizer, which I love because it's a riser and it also has a drawer on the bottom. I thought this would be great for all of the baby medicine products and then I could put syringes at the bottom there. I tested it out with the label still on it because I wasn't sure I was gonna keep it that way and wanted to see what it looked like before I took the tag off. These white bins that I'm using come in a few different sizes. So I believe I got the medium size and I also got the large size. The medium size I could fit four across and then the large size I could fit three across. This is another fun organizer that has some drawers on it. I believe it's meant for cosmetics or I think it's meant for in the bathroom. And I had a few small little items that I thought would work well in here. So I started putting a few of them in there and then as I go through the rest of the products, I'll see what else I wanna put in there. For the larger bins, I am going to have some backstock supplies. I put some backstock wipes. I used to keep those in the bedroom, but now that I have two kids, it might make more sense to have them here in the bathroom. I have a couple of hooded towels for babies and all of those types of things fit a little bit better in the large bins. And then you'll see I'm trying to shuffle things around here. Nothing's perfect the first time you organize and organize again. That's just part of the process. And the more I'm fine tuning things, the better it's fitting into each of the organizing spaces. I'm here to hold your hand to You'll see I'd also kept the label on the Lazy Susan there because I was still making sure it was 100% the one that I wanted to keep. Now that I have stuff in it, I've decided it is and I am going to peel those off. For the other medium sized bins, I'm going to put one for bath toys because we always have bath toys in flux and leaving it as kind of just a generic bath toy bin will be great because that could really mean anything, bath paints or actual bath toys. And I'm sure we will have bath toys for many years to come. I poured out some of his flossers. I also have baby tooth wipes that I put in this second Lazy Susan. And I'm moving stuff around, making a little bit of extra space for it. It's in the system, it's in our blood. You cannot keep me from looking for love. Don't wanna hide it, ain't gonna lie. I'm on the run till the day that I die. It feels like a good stopping point where I'm starting to understand what types of things I have. So I'm going to head downstairs to my office and make some labels for these bins. 
And as usual, I keep the labels as generic as possible. I really, really recommend this with spaces that change often as well. So any space where you have a child because kids' needs change so often, keep the labels as generic as possible or just have a little bit of foresight into what the future is going to look like. If you are having your last baby, for example, labeling things with really baby specific items is going to be so temporary. But if you're going to have more babies in the future, maybe it would make sense to have something that's a little bit more baby specific. Otherwise, keep it really generic. Bath, hair, teeth, <laughs> whatever it might be, just so you can change it out as things progress. Those types of labels might even work all the way up until adulthood. So I use my Cricut machine to make these labels. If you're ever interested in purchasing labels from my website, I do sell custom vinyl labels. So if you want something like this for your organizing project, you can head to my website and purchase those there. Now I'm going to apply them to all the bins. I chose two fonts to put together. All you do is peel off the little tape and put them exactly where you want them, rub them on nice and good and peel that tape off and you have a perfectly labeled bin. And you'll see that there are still stickers on the white bins here, which I will pull off. Don't worry, I'm not the type of person that leaves labels and tags on things. While I was labeling, I still had an extra Lazy Susan in the middle here. I wasn't sure what I was gonna do, but you'll see in just a minute what the final after looks like and exactly how I decided to set it all up. There was a mental battle going back and forth and making sure I had all of our kid and baby items in here and just had enough organizers for everything, but you'll see at the end how everything looks nice and spaced out and it's not too crammed in there. Saw you down the motorway There was something about you that day I can still hear the shimmering sound I got labels on the drawers and you will see that I was able to consolidate things and ended up having two spare shelves. One is actually the floor free where I can still grow and expand a little bit and things are just spread out here so it's not too busy. I hope you enjoyed this quick organizing project and it inspires you to do a little bit of organizing in your home. But until next time, I will see you all later. I wanna be.